pity. Did you have pity for me? When you're giving me those girls, did you have pity for me? Did you? You left the baby and I at the hospital. You abandoned us and disappeared, Derek. Which baby? Which baby, Hilda? Which baby? I see you shameless. You are a shameless woman. That's what you are. You have no shame. You keep giving me baby, baby girl, baby girl, girl after girl after girl. You don't have any shame. On the contrary, Derek, and it's you who is shameless. I mean, how can you abandon your wife and, and newborn baby at the hospital? Have you any idea how irresponsible that makes you? Have you? I want a boy. I want a boy. Give me a son, Derek. Give me a son. I want a boy. Stop it. I want a boy. I want a boy. Give me a boy. I know you're educated. You think it's a woman's fault? You think it's a woman's fault for whatever sex a baby she has? You the cause. It's your fault. Because I'm the man. I'm the man. Give me a boy. Huh? Every time I tell you, Hilda, open your legs wide. Let's enjoy it. You say, no, it hurts. It's painful. Not much. Not much. You keep closing your freaking legs. Now, what do you give me? A girl. 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 I'm tired. Can I get a boy? That's what I want. I want a boy. Give me a son. Okay? This is the fourth child. Fourth. One, two, three, four girls lined up. I mean, I can't take this now. Why? Why four girls? Why now? Was that the primary reason you abandoned your wife and baby at the hospital? To disappear into thin air? What would you have done if you were in my shoes? What would you have done? Derek, abandoning your newborn baby and your wife is not what adults do. What do adults do? Huh? They take responsibilities. Okay, okay. Yes. How can you impregnate a woman and then after the entire nine-month discomfort she puts to bed? Only for you to abandon her and disappear. Where is your conscience, Derek? I just wasn't expecting a fourth girl. I wasn't expecting it. Hi. You got it all wrong. Yes. You see, no child should be treated special. A female child is as important as a male child. Therefore, this idea of family that do not have a male child is doomed is complete fallacy and should be eradicated. So she should give me a son. Give me a boy. Period. Matter close. Period. Matter Close. Uh -huh, nah. So why don't you go ahead and put a boy in her and she will gladly give you the boy and period, the matter will close. Look at you. You're not even remorseful about what you've done. My wife has turned my house into a female making agency. Four girls. One, two, why now? What is all this? I know I'm done with this marriage. I cannot continue. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. Oh. You see, a woman would only bring forth what a man deposits in her. So if you desperately want a male child, Derek, go ahead and put that in her. She shouldn't be, be involved in the blame. This is what you are missing. This is the missing link. I'm the only son for my parents, the only boy. So I need a boy to continue that lineage. And if I don't have a boy, what do I do? Uh -huh. How can I? What do I? I need. Derek, cut your ego. Cut all of it off. 
Go home and apologize to your wife. You have done that woman a lot of wrong. <laughs> apologize to the woman who would not give me a son? Really? Injide, Dalo, thank you very much for wasting my time. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Really? God bless you. Like, really? Ugh. Mm. Babes, I heard in the deck I went and built Hilda and her baby at the hospital. Like, seriously. I think that dairy guy is mad. It's not Hilda's fault anyways. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. What? What women go through in the hands of men is unspeakable. Oh dear. But, but, how could Derek do such a demeaning thing to his wife and newly born baby? I mean, this is wickedness. Men and their troubles. His wife gave him exactly what he gave to her. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly what I said when I heard the news. If I were Hilda, I will never forgive that Derek. <laughs> Rubbish. Sure. Men, they will never stop to amuse me. Honestly, babes, I know of um, a couple who had six girls. Mm. In the quest of this man to have a male child, the man started having extramarital affair with his liquid. <laughs> yes. Wait. I are you saying the man kept a baby outside their home? Exactly. Relax. Let me give you guys a full gist. Please go on with me. Unknown to this um, poor woman, her husband was having an affair outside his matrimonial home. This man rented an apartment for this lady and furnished it to text. The man would come up with lies that he was going for a business trip, not knowing that the meeting was in his sleeping house. Men and the other saints. I mean, men will stain your wife. They will stain it too. <laughs> before we could say Jack, like before we could know anything that was happening, this girl got pregnant. Hmm? And the man lies increase. This man will go on a week, two weeks just to be with his sleep queen. Wait, let me ask you this. So, how did his wife cope with his constant absence from their home? Because I, I don't get it. I'm at home and he's always traveling. The woman found solace in her children and she never Oh, poor woman. So, um, what happened thereafter? Mm -hmm. Madam G. <laughs> After nine months, this slave queen gave birth to a baby girl. After lying to the man that she was pregnant of a boy. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, not just that, she got pregnant again. And this man was in high hopes. After following her to see a doctor who confirmed that she was carrying twins, two boys. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this man went for shopping. Also, the slay queen did a baby shower. Wow. They did a lot. They took pictures and posted on all social media, Instagram, Facebook, and all that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Are you> serious? <laughs> yes, so on the day of delivery. This lady gave birth to two girls. Again? Yes. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. From what I gathered from your story, it is very obvious that this lay mama knew she was pregnant with girls. Yes, yes, of course. She and the doctor planned it. She told the doctor to tell her man that she was carrying boys. Just imagine that. <laughs> Evelyn, please. I'm interested in knowing what became of the man. I swear, yeah. Seriously, I want to know. The man went back to his wife, of course, and children. Wow. Really? Yes. And guess what? The wife became pregnant again. Wow. Another pregnancy after six children? Yes. Jesus. And this time around, she gave birth to three plus. No! Three boys! Oh my god, that is great! Oh, wow. oh geez! Man, this is nice. It's cause for celebration, I swear. This is serious. Hmm. The God of 11th hour did this for this woman. Oh, yeah. The God that do everything broke the genes. And this woman was filled with 
joy. She was so excited. Oh Even me, my joy is so full right now. Like, I want to pop champagne right now. On the day of dedication, yes. the man confessed everything and he started crying. Oh. Honestly. So, anything can happen to anybody. I believe you that will do it. Yeah. In fact, this thing goes, see, like a priest is gone. Derek, are you going out again? I mean, you should go back. It's been three days since the baby and I returned home and you just go back and now you're going out again? I don't have your time. Woman, I don't have your time. Okay? To think you have no pity whatsoever for the baby and I is something I find very baffling. Pity. Pity? Did you have pity for me? When you're giving me those girls, did you have pity for me? Derek. Did you? You left the baby and I at the hospital. You abandoned us and disappeared, Derek. Which baby? Which baby? <laughs> Hilda. Which baby? I see you shameless. You are a shameless woman. That's what you are. You have no shame. You keep giving me baby, baby girl, baby girl, girl after girl after girl. You don't have any shame. On the contrary, Derek, and it's you who is shameless. I mean, how can you abandon your wife and, and newborn baby at the hospital? Have you any idea how irresponsible that makes you? Have you? I want a boy. I want a boy. Give me a son, Derek. Give me a son. I want a boy. Stop it. I want a boy. I want a boy. Give me a boy. I know you're educated. You think it's a woman's fault? You think it's a woman's fault for whatever sex a baby she has? You the cause. It's your fault. Because I'm the man. I'm the man. Give me a boy! Huh? Every time I tell you, Hilda, open your legs wide. Let's enjoy it. You say, no, it hurts. It's painful. Not much. Not much. You keep closing your freaking legs. Now, what do you give me? A girl. 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 I'm tired. Can I get a boy? That's what I want. I want a boy. Give me a son, okay? Begin up, begin up. Oh, come from God. Give me a boy. All I can do, all I can do, you better. He's always talking to me about his relationship with his wife, how it's nice, they communicate, it's romantic, the sex life is excellent, and his wife has bought him sons. In my case, it's a different scenario, totally different. Why? There you go again, comparing yourself to someone else. Why should you die? Why should I not? Why won't I? I miss her. Well, did she tell your friend, the one that was bragging about how great this sex life with his wife is? Did she tell him this you, a one minute man? 
Well, you, you're trying to hurt me. <laughs> you and I know that's not true. And you, you just want to say to Can't me. Can I get a what you are? You're a woman, man. Well, it doesn't matter whatever it is. At the end of the day, if you cannot give me what I want, then I'm going to go out there and get it. Well, go on then. What, what is stopping you? You're daring me? Are you daring me? You're daring me? Derek. Derek, what you should do is be grateful to God for what he has given you. And then go to him in prayers and tell him what you want and watch him do it. Going on to have extramarital affair like you just said you would, it's like telling God, I don't need your help, I can help myself. Who does that? Hilda, I've seen you pray in this house. I've seen you pray in this house many times, several times. I've heard you asking God for a son. It, where's the result? Where are the evidences? Where? None. So what's your point again about prayers? What's your point? Huh? Take your children. Your children need the love and care of their father. But you, you are very absent in your lives. And what you fail to understand is that children are angels. Children love and they'll call for their brothers. That's the way it works. Let she cries. When we talk about it, then she cries as she dares me at the end of the day. You know what? And I'm not going to touch you again. I will not touch you again because it is me, me, less. Derek. You don't produce anything. So how's my baby doing? She's fine. She's fine. She's sleeping now. Oh, okay. Julie, you know that if it's not for you, chances are I'd be stuck at that hospital by now with the baby. That's why I can't stop thanking you. That's okay. Listen, I need you to always remember that God passes through people to reach out to us, okay? Mm -hmm. That's true. You were saying something over the phone. Oh, yeah. But I, I pretty much told you everything. Everything that transpired earlier. Derek came back home after days of absenteeism and left again. To God knows where. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> I wish I was. Yeah, I wish. <sighs> There's nothing to... This is not even something to joke about. Why are you... Stop laughing. I mean, it, it's not something to laugh about. What do you want me to do? cry about it, kill myself because my husband thinks the children I've had for him are all worthless. If he wants a male child, he should go on out there and get one. I don't mind. You know, for, for a second, I thought, I thought Derek was a gentleman. Yeah, not anymore. He's not. Derek has changed. He's a completely different person now. These days, all he does is nag, nag, and nag like a crazy old woman. And then blame me repeatedly for being the reason we have just girls as children. Everything is going to be okay. All right? No, you are not going to do that to yourself. 
You will not do that to yourself. Come on, sweetheart. It's okay. No, stop crying. Everything is going to be okay. Trust me. Trust me. That's enough. Yeah. Do not let his attitude and animosities towards you guys weigh you down. He's going to come around. Who? Your husband, of course. Oh. Right. <laughs> you mean the same fellow who has made it clear to me that he will go outside our matrimonial home and get a boy son, by all means. He said that. He said more. Gracious God, what has come over Derek? Imagine Derek telling me that his best man has three sons already. What is this sudden comparison about? I mean, what if he goes out there, gets infected by a venereal disease and then comes back to infect you with it? Well, he has since threatened never to sleep with me again. Hilda, you really have to take things easy. Okay. I'll call you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Take it easy. Whatever wealth you feel you've acquired is in your pocket. I am not your employee and I can never be. So be careful how you talk to me, okay? Is this what you have become? Is this how you talk to your superior? Superior? <laughs> and who is my superior? You? A single lady who is not even in a relationship. My superior. Oh, please, give me a break. So, you now see yourself as a married woman? You are not even ashamed to say it. Ashamed? What for? Why should I be ashamed of myself? Am I not married? You're married. Of course. Married to who? Married to the husband of the same woman who saw you, had compassion on you, trusted you, and made you her nanny. I only came here to answer this call for a reason best known to me. So do not insult me before I show you the old you here. And let me tell you, I am not afraid of you. If I was, I won't be here alone. There's no threat on you here. I'm just saying, be very, very careful because karma is real. Something tells me that you've started seeing all this to be the spiritualist. Just to solve your loneliness. I never said you shouldn't do that. Go ahead. But do it without mentioning my name, okay? Olivia. Because of you, a man abandons his wife who just put to bed at the hospital. Possibly you want me to help you make your dream man Abandon his family just for you. I can help you do that. It is survival of the fittest. Oh yes. But then you have to withdraw the original submission. That you are superior to me. Are you kidding me? You're not. You are inferior to me. Oh shut the hell up. Before I shut it. The hard way for you. Listen. You go. And mark it somewhere. You. Will regret this. Is 
that what you're saying? That is what it is. Let's see how it goes. You got something coming. Has it returned? No. And when I call him, he doesn't pick nor return my calls. Hilda. This is not the time to cry. This is that time where you do not relent in prayers. Derek now lives with a girl. How did you know? A certain Olivia girl called saying that I'm fooling myself, thinking I have a husband. What? And then she said that she has him now, and she's going to give him all that I didn't give him all these years. When are you going to vacate that house for me to move in? Who is this? <laughs> Who are you? Okay, okay. This is Olivia. Olivia for Derek. Derek's new wife. The one who has come to give him that which he could not give him all the things of my uh -huh. Please. Do well to forget that house because I'm pregnant for him already. So I'm coming to take over as quickly as possible. Did you get that? Olivia, listen to me. One thing I assure you is that the same cup with which you have measured to me will surely be used to measure right back at you. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, sweetheart. God cannot answer your prayer. I mean, he doesn't answer prayers anymore. Yes. If he does, he would have answered you by giving you a son. As for me, I didn't ask. But I'm already pregnant for him. And it's a boy. Can't you see? Olivia. Please. Allow my husband to come home. Allow my husband to return to us. His children have started to ask questions about him. And I don't know what to tell them. I don't. <laughs> you know what? Let me just inform you now. My husband Derek is coming to sue for a divorce. Uh-huh. Your marriage with him is as good as dead. It is over between the two of you. Yes. And as for the record, he has no need for your girls. So as you're leaving that house, move with your girls, please. Okay? Bye. Mm. That was me. That was me. But you liked it. That was the plan, yeah? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh! 
It's all making sense now in my head. The other day, I saw Derek and this same Olivia working out of a supermarket together. My husband has no shame again. They were holding hands, laughing and giggling like newlyweds. They were really happy. What did I ever do to Derek to deserve this? <laughs> Derek had run my children and I, and now he's leaving me home. <laughs> I remember when this Derek of a guy wanted to marry me. He kept coming on so strong. And I kept busting him off. But he wouldn't give up. There was just something about him. I was skeptic. There was something about him I couldn't wrap my fingers around. <laughs> you know my life would have been better if I didn't marry him. Are you telling me? <laughs> I much made both of you. And that is because I felt that what Derek had for you was genuine love. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is this if you cannot arrange a meeting between Hilda and I you can give me your digits give me a number and I'll do the rest Hilda is not just my friend she's my sister she's better you're good now so you should be able to give me her number I, I don't just like this girl you know I can confidently say I love her. Yeah. I'm serious. Derek, how do you <laughs> jump into conclusions like that? For a woman, you just met. Listen, I'm not even taking you seriously. Oh, you have to take me seriously. You should. I, I know I haven't really mingled with her like that. We haven't really met. But that should just tell you that I know what I want. She, she's the woman of my dream. She take, she takes all the boxes. I, I love her. You know what? Can we just go straight to the business that brought you to my house? Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, really. So, I have 12,000 pieces of that t-shirt in my factory. How many are you paying for right now? I can pay for all 12,000. Oh, I'm good. capable. Good, good, good. You know I can. And then you can have them delivered to my shop um, immediately. All right. But, but, Hilda's number. <laughs> Derek, I, what kind of condition is this one you're giving me my, my business? Listen, now, it's up to you to pay or not to pay. Derek, you know I import the best stuff. Come on. So that's that's up to you. I'm just I'm just playing. I'm not really giving you any condition. I'm just saying I will purchase the stuff. But at the same time, in the same breath, I am pleading that you give me her number. That's what I'm saying. Listen, I know Hilda. She's really skeptical about fine boys. Cute yeah. guys. What does that mean? She believes cute guys are cheats. Oh, come on. Get out. You know I'm different now. I don't know. Dude, dude, dude. I don't stop, know you're my stop, brother. Stop now. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> you know I'm a different guy. I'm cool like that. Come on. Uh-uh. Not today. Oh, well. I, not like I'm promising you anything. You know Hilda. She's been through. I'll talk to her. I'll see what she has to say. Yeah, I'm not just looking for a relationship. I, I want more than that. So what do you want? I want marriage. 
a marriage. Yeah, of course, I'm who serious. does that? I does that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Are you kidding me? I'm not. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll talk to her and see what she has to say. Okay? Please do. It means a lot to me. For real. Oh, well. Back to the business. You said you're buying 12,000 pieces of the t-shirt. Can I have my money now, please? And my truck will be right at your doorstep tomorrow. Give me money now. <laughs> no, the answer is no. What are you even asking me to do? You want me to let myself into another relationship? After surviving a gigantic heartbreak from a five-year-old relationship that went sour. No. Hilda, maybe God wants to wipe your tears. There's no tears left here to wipe. I'm fine now. I'm fine having survived Obi for starters. Remember Obi? Remember that relationship? I put in a lot into it. I put in all that I had. And what did Obi do? He left me for a UK-based babe. And I hurt deep for that. You know it. And then you started encouraging me to try love again. Try relationship. It's good for you. And then along came Benson. You know how that ended too. And now you want me to do what? Please. Derek wants to marry you. What? <laughs> okay, this is getting hilarious even more. He wants to marry someone he doesn't know. I don't know the guy. Why would I want to marry him? How long does it even take to know someone? Just a day. So why don't you get to know him first? And then if he's your kind of man, you say yes. Guess what? No! He's a good man. I don't care. I really don't. If you ask me, I'll say you should give him a I'm chance. <laughs> Girl, I'm done with men. Men in their entirety, I'm done. There's nothing left here for them. Hilda. Least of all, if I'm one like Derek, who will have me? Dragging him with other girls because he's way too cute. Ain't nobody got time, girl. Nah. You ask her, say you give him a chance. I said no. N O. No. He's a good man. I don't care. Give him a chance. No. to her and then I have both of you at my place. A little chat here and there will do. Ah, don't worry, she's gonna come around. Hilda is my babe. Oh yeah. Okay. See you later.
relax. She's coming. I'm just getting impatient. I mean, we've been waiting for a while now, you know? You seem to underestimate the level of closeness I have with my friend. Listen, she's my childhood friend. If she gives me her word, she sticks with it. So she's going to be here. Even though I didn't tell her she was going to meet you here. Does that mean you've not been giving her my messages? Relax already, Derek. She's coming. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. Chill. Ah, yeah. That must be hard to do. Are you ready to meet you? Hello. Look who is here now. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit late, but I'm here. That's okay. I got off work. I have to go home, take a shower, feel fresh. And now that's okay. <laughs> so I'm going. My workaholic bank. You better stop that. <laughs> you look amazing, girl. I know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Apology accepted, so that's okay. Yeah. Hello, Yoda. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. This is her. Who's the guy? Oh, th this is um, my very handsome client, Derek. <laughs> you have your way with words. <laughs> I, I take it as a compliment. Thank you. That's a good introduction. Derek. Same Derek. Oh, yes, yes. The same Derek. Both of you would have to excuse me for now. Girl, I'll be upstairs. So, how are you? Good. I don't want to be in a meeting with you right now, so I'm just gonna go. Um, Hilda, Hilda, please, don't walk away. I already am. Look, Hilda, come on. I already told my friend that I'm not interested in you. What the hell is this about? Uh, listen, um... All this might seem a little strange and weird. That is because you and I, we haven't really interacted enough to get to know ourselves. So it seems as if it's kind of bizarre. But I love you. That's what it is. Oh, you must think I'm a moron to believe that crap you just said. No, no, no. Look, I just need you to give me a chance. Give me a chance. Just say yes, and that's it. Save your breath. I hate men. Well, I don't understand why you hate men, but see it as if I'm that different guy, the different breed. Come on. <laughs> All men cheat, let alone a handsome one like you. Yoda, please, come on. Don't. Don't do this. No. The answer is no. Hilda, don't. I know you come around. <laughs> I seriously don't know what else you want me to say. But I'll keep talking to Hilda. At least until she gives you a positive response. Okay? Oh, I love this girl. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> I need your help. Talk to her, please. Mm, that's a love boy talk. Your friend thinks I'm a playboy. <laughs> oh, well. You really can't blame her, you know. You know, she's been in relationships with, like, two very cute guys. Uh huh. Well, those relationships didn't end well. Considering the fact that she's a banker, she really doesn't have the time to frolic around town with men. That's why I love her. That, that's just why I'm in love with her. <laughs> no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it for you. She's my sister, so I can fix it. Trust me. Thanks. I trust you now. Oh, yeah. You are too much. You are too much. You are too much. 
Lover boy. See you later. Okay, I'll see you. Hilda, can you not see that Derek loves you so much? The guy is going crazy for you. Do you want to punish him for the sins of others? Do you know where I'm coming from? I've been through a lot in the hands of men. I know. Well, let's just say God has seen all you've been through and this is him trying to compensate you with Derek who is cuter and even richer than all of your exes. There's no... There's no chemistry. Derek wants to marry me but we don't know each other. So are you going to remain like this because you've been jilted by men who didn't deserve you? I don't like pressure. And right now I am being pressured. Derek is pressuring me. That's because he has his fears. What fears? He fears that another man would come and take you away. The guy loves you so much and wants to make you his wife and mother of his beautiful and handsome unborn children. I still need time. a bachelor, eating noodles every night, drinking tea in the morning. I mean, how? Who does that? Hey, babe. Hi. How are you? <clears throat> Baby? Are you okay? What's wrong? What is good about this evening? And where are you from? Excuse me? I'm sure your parents taught you not to answer a question with another question. And my question is, where are you from? I am coming from the bank, my workplace, you know that. What time is it? Hello? What? I don't know. Which married woman, sane married woman, will wake up, go to work early in the morning, comes back late, almost every night, almost every night. Derek, need I remind you that when I was a single girl, I was a banker. All those times that you wooed me and wanted me so badly to become your lady, I was a banker. Now that I'm your wife, I am still a banker. So what the hell is this noise that you're raving on about? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm making noise now. Well, I'm a noisemaker now. Listen, I need to feel like it. In my own house. I'm a noisemaker. Derek. Is that what I am? I make noise. Really? Derek. Is that what I am? I make noise. Really? You know what? Okay. I have had, I've had quite a long hectic day i have time for this i'm just gonna go inside take a long warm bath and hit the sheets yeah. i know the line i know the line that's what you say every day whenever you come home i'm tired i'm gonna take a long bath and i'll sleep i'm tired i'm gonna take a long warm bath and i'll sleep i know you're taking lines you say it every day every day that's what you say once you come home i'm tired you're gone i'm gonna sleep do you consider my needs 
Do you think about me and what I will eat? Is this how you want me to live? You're eating already, Derek. What more do you want me to prepare for you by this time of the night? What do you want? You want to eat my flesh? This food. It is food. That's if why you I eat this food. And noodles. No, no, I'm not gonna get into this drama with you. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, yeah, go. Go. This is what I have to deal with. And it's my fault. I married you. It's my fault. I married a banker. It's this food! Because you don't know tomorrow. Look, Hilda. Something has been on my heart and I need us to trash it out. Oh, baby. Can it wait a minute? You understand how I'm feeling right now? Look, I didn't marry you for the bank. I married you for me. For me. There you go again, complaining. And why shouldn't I complain? Why should I not complain? I mean, think about it. Give it a serious thought. Since we got married, I've never had any quality food to eat. Think about it. I want pounded yam, a goosey soup, an oha soup, something traditional. That is what I like. I want swallow. And all you keep giving me is eggs and noodles and tea and bread. What am I doing with those things? Pounded yam. Yes, that's what I want you to serve me. That's what I want. I want to enjoy my good old traditional food. I don't want the other stuff. And that's not all up. After you've served me, I wish that you'll be there to hold my hand and cuddle and kiss me and make love to me and make me feel good. That is what happens in other homes. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry I don't have the time to give you the things that you want. Right now, all I just want to do is sleep. Today was super hard on me. I just... <laughs> and you expect me to behave as if everything is okay when nothing is right. Derek. Can you please let me sleep? Okay. My eyes are heavy. My body aches. I just want to sleep. Wait, 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 wait. Is this what you're gonna be doing? When, when we start having kids? No, wait, hold on a second. I married you with my hard-earned cash. Brought you to my home. Yes. I mean, it's a fact. And then what happens? You come home, you go to bed. You come home, you jump into bed. What? So, when we start having kids, are you going to leave the kids for me to take care of? I mean, God forbid. God forbid, it's not going to happen. This bank thing must go. I'm telling you. And she's yawning. As if what I'm saying is stupidity. Because I'm tired.
Yeah, married. A ghost wife. Why can't I even relate with? I know food in the morning. I mean, a single man is even better than me who is married. This is ridiculous. This is just madness. This is the height of it. I'm telling you, I am desperate right now. I mean, things are not working out. I cannot communicate with her, arguing all the time. She won't cook my meals. I mean, three months in the marriage and things are already crumbling. I, mean, I eat noodles in the evening and drink tea in the morning repeatedly. That's my life. And I'm married. Are you, are you serious, I, Derek? I am not kidding you. Noodles? Seriously, I'm not kidding you. I, I'm really sorry about that, okay? But you know, I would also like you to understand the fact that Hilda, your wife, is a career woman. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're acting as if I don't know other career women. They're career women now. They don't fool. What are you saying? They cook, they clean, they take care of kids, and they work. Is she an exception? No. Please talk to her. Talk to her. I'm beginning to lose it. Derek, not like I'm making excuses for her, but I would suggest you take things really easy. While I talk to her and see if she can make some amends here and there. Well, she better know. amend her life. Because there are lots of other women out there that are super women. They can do everything. They can multitask. They get it all done. No complaint. And they take the credit. Don't take it easy. No, now. I am a career woman and you know it. Did I marry a career woman? I married a wife. Not a career woman. So I don't expect you to be walking around and doing things like a career woman. Play your role first as a wife. Well, my career still comes first. Okay, can both of you stop it already? Please? You cannot put me in a box. Derek, I was a banker before you married me. Do you remember? Don't you pity me. Don't you? I eat noodles every night, every night, and you don't have a problem with that. But you eat rice and stew and chicken on Sundays, don't you? Look at you sounding like it's only noodles you eat. Meanwhile, you eat rice on Sundays. On Sundays? Uh -huh. What about the rest of the days? You, what you say doesn't even make sense. Uh -huh. There he goes. We have seen you, Mr. Sense. Hilda. No, he's the only one that has sense. Hilda, do you always engage your husband in this shouting competition all the time? Leave me alone. Let me talk senses into this man because apparently he's very senseless. Hilda. What? Apologize to your husband. What, what are you saying? Hilda, I said apologize to your husband right now. What is this? I won't. This is what I go through. This is what I go through all the time. All the time. Hilda. Yeah? I apologize to your husband. I just said I won't. Then I have to leave. Go, go home. Ah, oh, I apologize to you. Njeri, please don't go. Just don't go yet. I'm not happy with what happened yesterday and you know it. What has come over you, Hilda? What happened to the nice person you used to be? I feel like... 
Derek is having an affair. How do you mean? I may not have cut him pants down, but I have this as a strong hunch. Hilda, you are wrong. Accusing your husband of cheating is completely out of place. Yes. Derek was here. He complained that you do not cook his meals. Oh my God. I am a banker. Derek knows that. The nature of my job is so demanding that I barely have chance to do anything. I can't even take care of myself, let alone cook. Hilda, your marriage, your family should be your topmost priority right now. I think your case is that of a lazy woman. What? I beg your pardon. Did you invite me here so you can insult me? Because I could just take my leave right now. Not exactly. <sighs> Derek is your husband. And you should take care of him. So many marriages have hit rock bottom because of negligence. You're a learned woman and I expect that you handle your home with care. Derek has to come to terms with the fact that I am a banker. And so these responsibilities that he expects of me cannot be met. Easily, I might add. Being a banker doesn't mean you should fail in marriage. I have seen a lot of bankers succeed in their marriages. Have you even thought of making different soups and just store them in the freezer? Yes, Hilda. You can make stew. Make a faku, make some porridge, make anything. Store them in the freezer. And then when you return from work, you can make some swallow for your husband since he enjoys swallow. Other than just allowing him to wallow in self-pity and, 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 and help himself out with noodles and eggs. This is a great idea. I mean, I've never thought of it like this. You were just a lazy woman. Stop it. Mm -mm. I have to tell you some truth, girlfriend. You work from Monday to Fridays. You don't work on Saturday and Sunday, so why don't you use these two days judiciously for the benefit of your family? Something else I just remembered. You call your husband by his name without minding whose ox is gored. What happened to all the beautiful names in this world? What happened to the babies, the sweethearts, the sugars, the boobos, all of those names? What happened to them? You called him by his name right before me. Listen, I know I'm not supposed to be interfering in your marital issues, but I cannot help it. You have become so insensitive, Hilda. You're so insensitive to know that Derek is an unhappy man. Unhappiness is written all over him. Hilda, he needs his wife. Would you rather lose your marriage on the altar of negligence? Hilda, have pity on this fine young man now. Do you want to push him outside into the hands of those desperados who cannot even help you manage your man? Hilda, Derek, he's your soulmate. 
why would you deny him your body? I come back from work every night exhausted, knackered, fagged out. I'm human being. You shouldn't let your job tear you apart. The world will always, always blame you for having a failed marriage. Yes. Listen, girlfriend. Divorce is skyrocketing because a lot of couples have abandoned their marriages in pursuit of shadows. Do not get carried away by all these marriages you throw, throw into the social media space because the real marriages happen inside the house. Girl, you got to swallow your pride. Go home and ask your husband for forgiveness. Well, it killed me today. I am. I am remorseful for my behavior. And right now, more than ever, I feel determined in my heart to fix it. I like the sound of that. All of it. Thank you. Come here, sis. Because I love you so much. Thanks. Fix this. I will. You have to get home safe. Yeah. Okay? Let me know when you get home. I will. Bye-bye now. Love you, girl. been a good wife at all. In spite of being a career woman, there are many things I haven't done right. Please tell me, what do you want me to do to right my wrongs? I'll do it. too much. I just want you to be a little more sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Concerning my needs and our needs as a couple. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for the world. I know. I'll do my best. You know I love you, right? I love you very much. I know that. And we're gonna try and make this work, okay? We're gonna make it work. Yeah. Thank you. It's okay. Stand up, stand up. 
How's it to go? Baby, tell me you're pregnant. Tell me you're pregnant. Yeah, I am. Um, eight weeks gone. Eight weeks? Ah, <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I'm going to be a father. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do. I have good pets. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Is that a problem? Why aren't you happy? I haven't said I'm not happy. Okay, but is there a problem? My job. What about your job? I don't... I don't want a baby yet. I don't... I... Are you listening to yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you listening to yourself? You, you don't want a baby yet? Look, Hilda, I do not like the way you're going with this. I don't. My husband, don't get me wrong. Children are gifts from God, but... But what? But what? Look, I don't want anything to happen to you or my baby, our baby. So? You, you gotta resign. Wait, what? Are you kidding me? No, I wish I was. Honestly, I wish I was. But you need to tender in your letter. Because I don't want anything to happen to you. Or oh, our baby. I will not resign. No. I insist. Look, Hilda, I've seen your job. I've seen how demanding it is. You've been going up and down, left and right, and mm -hmm. doing things. You mm -hmm. need to resign ASAP, tender in your letter, and get some rest because you need it. I will do it, Derek. I'm not the only banker who is a family woman. But I want you to. I want. I want you to. <sighs> how about that? I want you to. I will not do it. This morning. Hey, baby. Good morning. How's your night? Oh, it's okay. Yeah? Where are you going? I'm going to work now. Which work at you? I thought we'd already been through this. Been through what? I thought we discussed this already. What? Your resignation. What? What? My what? My resignation? Did I, did I say I was resigned? You want me to resign? Marie, Wait a minute. Discussion. You want me to resign? Why the hell will I do that? Because you are in your first trimester. You need rest. Oh, whoa. I, I, I'm not the first banker alive to be pregnant. What has my pregnancy got to do with? A resignation letter, Derek. Look, Yoda. I can take care of you. And our unborn child. Not a problem. Derek, nothing in this world will come in between my job and I. Besides, I want to remain an independent woman. I know what it's like to be a housewife and that's a no-no for me. Wait, wait, where is that issue? I can take care of you, hands down. Where's the problem? I want to make my own money. So you're going to drag this? I expect you to reason with me on this. Derek, I really don't know what this is about, but I don't want to get into it. So I'm just I'm going to go and I'll see you tonight. Yeah? Okay. Have a great day. Why are you stressing? 
Robbie. I mean, you, you, you need rest. What is all of this? Baby, don't you think you're beginning to overflow this topic? Maybe I should just get Angelica involved. What? What is the matter with you, Derek? Why do you have to run off to Njideka every friggin' time we have a little situation that we can sort out within ourselves? Because she's your friend. So? She masturbated us. Yeah, so? Is that why we have to wash our dirty linens in public? Derek? She's not an outsider. And our linen is not dirty yet. Well, I think, I honestly think that you running up and whining to her every now and then is just damn childish. Like I said, she's an outsider. She's a family. That's what she is. And besides, if you don't want me to run to her, then do what I say. You know what? Just switch yourself. I'm gonna go take a bath. Excuse me. Yeah, my wife doesn't want me to have a say in her affairs. I see. I'm the man of this house, okay? And I will get what I want when I want it. This is amazing. I know. Any movement? Well, not at the moment. It's gonna be a boy. Yeah? It's a girl. No, no. It's a boy. It's a boy. I, I just, I feel in my guts, it's a boy. Well, baby, this has gone past what you want. It's about what's actually in here. It's a girl. Okay, wait, what do you what do you mean? You're joking, right? You wish I was. Now come on, get serious. It's a boy. I did the scan today and the result revealed that it's a girl. <laughs> What's wrong? Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I heard you. So I just always wanted a boy, you know? Oh. I want a boy. I mean, all my life as a youngster, I've been thinking about it and dreaming about it, that when I'm a father, I want to hold my son, I want a boy. Oh. I actually want three boys. Oh, three. And one girl. Yes, first three should be boys. I just want a boy. Oh, man. Oh, my. Well, this is a girl. <laughs> And, and you're gonna be all right. <laughs> I mean, we 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 have a girl. How great is this? Yeah. You win this time. I win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can accept this. Uh -huh. But afterwards, it's gonna be a boy, a boy, and another boy, mm -hmm. and if mistakenly, another boy. Oh Jesus Christ! So, one girl, three boys. Okay, sir. That's what I want. Okay, sir. I want a boy! You, you're gonna get it. Oh, but I just want a boy, I'm telling you. Watch your leg. Careful. Sure. Where, where are you going? Gonna take a rest. Just like that? Yeah. And you are? I'm the new nanny. The nanny? Yes, oh. 
What's your name? My name is Olivia. Olivia? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Oh. I see. Um, my auntie will soon join you. She's breastfeeding her baby. Okay. Okay. Is, is, do you wear this every day? I don't understand, ma'am. That, that's okay. Oh, let me. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> Did you babe see what I what I saw? My dear. Hmm. I mean. Hmm. What is wrong with Hilda? How could she get such a beautiful girl as Amani? Knowing full well that she hardly stays at home. I mean, what was she thinking? When she comes, you need to ask her that question. Mm -hmm. Because I don't get. <laughs> ask her when she comes. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> hey, babes. Hey. Oh. Oh. Look at you now. Oh, look at you now. Oh. This is a pleasant surprise. It is. Excuse me. Olivia! Yes, ma'am. Come, 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 come. I do what I want to take, please. Okay, um. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Really? Hilda, we are okay. Maybe later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll come with you again. Because I'm sure you want something. Okay. But maybe you don't know what you want yet. <laughs> Hilda? Yes. Whose idea was it to get a nanny? Mine. Yours? Yeah, of course it was practically mine because I need help around here. For real? Mm-hmm. <gasps> Computer. Are you kidding us? I mean, how could you get such a beautiful girl as your baby's nanny? I, mean, I don't get it. Okay. Okay, I see what's going on here. I know the look on your faces. This expression, trash it. <laughs> because I know what's going on in your mind. No, no, not here, not around here. Not with my man. My husband is 1000% responsible. Oh. There is no freaking way in this world he will still sell that as such. Really? Okay. Can you vouch for your husband? Yes, I can. I just did. Hilda, your husband is an active man for crying out loud. Please tell her. Oh, man. Are cheats. They can't even control their libidos. Does it? A Hilda. Okay. Now the thing is, Amanda and Barbara are not so far off from the truth. Girl, you leave your house at 6 a.m. and return at night. Do you honestly, sincerely, intentionally want to leave your cute husband? I mean, your very attractive husband with that beautiful girl you call a nanny. Olivia, really? Yes, Olivia. Stop it. You need to stop it. In fact, all of you, stop it. Wait a minute, did you come here to gossip? Okay, you have not changed. You came to start procuring my house. Are you here to see the baby? Oh, uh, to raise a lamb where there is none. I want to see the baby girl, but you see that chick? Hmm. Christopher. Hilda. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm not talking again. She is even the same complexion with your husband. Mm. Oh, <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> Mm. 
Ah, I relish good food. This is lovely. You like it, right? I love it. It's awesome. Mm. Just as you're going to like what I'm about to give you as soon as you finish eating this food. Olivia, stop. Stop it. Stop. You're too cute. <sighs> Do you really want me to stop or I should go ahead and give you that which your wife could not give you all these years of marriage? Olivia, stop. Um, yeah. Hold on, I'm done eating. I'm done with this. I can come back and finish this later on. <laughs> to move to the comfort of your bed. this question okay what is it well I don't know if it's going to offend you but I just feel like I need to ask you as a colleague and as a friend I'm listening so what is it why did you say no to Mark's proposal I mean why did you reject him <sighs> Kosi are you one of the ladies that believe that marriage is the highest achievement a woman will attain in life. Are you? No. I don't need to say that, but Mark is a good guy and he has a fine car. Yes, a flashy car at that. Oh, okay, because Mark has a flashy car, like you just said, you have concluded that he's a good guy. Kosi, are you that cheap? Uh, 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 uh. Don't insult me. I'm only saying that you shouldn't have rejected him outright. At least you should have said yes to the young guy. Helen! Well, I said no to him because I do not know what Mark does for a living. And from what I know, Mark might be a froster. And I do not want to have anything to do with such a man. And what if he's a froster? How is it your business? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, is it easy to get a young good-looking guy that is not into fraud? Answer me! Well, it's my business because it's my life. And if you don't have anything meaningful to tell me or ask me, go back to what you were doing. And please, if you so wish to hang out with frosters, do it without involving me, okay? I'm only... Excuse I'm... me. Look at this one. I'm just telling you something and you're here insulting me. Anyways, I don't blame you. Oh, Olivia. Mm. Do you know how sweet you are? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I can have you all day. Like, all day. I can have your sweet part of all day, I'm telling you. What did you say? Sweet part. <laughs> <laughs> you spoiled you. Tell you. Of course, I know I'm spoiled. Thank you very much. Ah, man. Do you know how many times I've come today? Were you actually counting them? Oh, yeah. Really? And when it's good, you count. Oh. Yeah. I've counted. I see. Too many times. It's just amazing. At a point, I'm wondering, where did I get all that strength from? 
I guess you caused it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because of this weed part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that is also because my wife doesn't put it down on me like the way you do. Oh. I'm telling you. Yours is just out of this world. <laughs> And she's just focused on her job, her work. Doesn't really take care of my sexual needs. You know. Sorry about that. But you are great. I know. You know, right? I think she's here. Let me see. Oh, you see? Yeah. She cry a lot today. No, not at all. I feed her very well and I make sure her food is ready. Uh -huh. Is either she's sleeping or playing around. Sometimes I need to wake her up. Really? Yes. Impressive. Thank you, ma. I see you're doing a good job taking care of the baby. Thank you, well done. Thank you, Let me see. You're welcome, ma. house. What's going on? Why is dinner not served yet? Do you know what time it is? Mom, I'm sorry. Kaima has been crying all day, so I had to attend to her. Kaima cried all day, you said? Yes, ma'am. Are you not contradicting yourself? Because back there, you, you were singing her praises, like everything is fine. But she cried all day. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oliver, what did you do all day around here, really? Because I'm surprised that the baby hasn't had a bath and my husband hasn't eaten because you're yet to make the food. I'm sorry, but I had to go to the market there and wash the baby's dirty clothes. That's why. So what are we having for dinner? Ma, I will arrange something so fast. I'm sorry. Get to it. <laughs> I heard Kaiba cry. So I went to her room. Uh, breastfed her. She's asleep now. Her man famished. That's good to know. But Lena said food will be ready soon. Okay. What's that smell? What smell? And why does the room look this way? What, what do you really do all day? This place looks really okay. It looks okay to me. What did she do all day? It looks some cat. Hello? Yes? Did I say it? Thank you. Baby, did I said I think you should go. I'll catch up. Okay. All right. about how I have succeeded in giving him just girl children. What happened to female children? 
Are they not children? Exactly what I keep asking him. Derek has changed. He's no longer the sweet, loving man that I once knew. No, he's not. Hilda, I'm not bothered about the sex of your children. I'm worried sick about you risking your life on marriage, leaving your home every morning for that nanny and your husband to be together under the same roof. What? No. No, not completely. I mean, I find it... It's a relief that he doesn't bother me with sex every night that I come back from the time. And... And stuff, but... It makes me ponder on the possibility of him cheating on me. Because if he's not getting it from me, he must be getting it some way. Derek have decided to seek pleasure with your nanny. God, will you stop it? What's your problem? Stop what? How can Derek sleep with that thing? Of all the women in the world? Oh, don't be sarcastic, Hilda. You see that thing dangling in between a man's thighs? It knows no class or age. Terry cannot do such a thing. A man that you call your husband hasn't slept with you in eight months. Eight whole months, Hilda! And you think everything is okay? Really? As I was saying, the other night, I was making sexual moves at him. And Derek, for the first time, had restrictions. He was filled with excuses. He was talking about how there was crazy traffic at the bridge and how he's exhausted. I'm so tired, you have no idea. Ow! My back. Are you seriously resisting me right now? You always wanted this. Stop. Stop. Now I was on that bridge for like almost an hour. I'm just tired. Can you please I'm not in the mood, okay? I was on that head bridge for like two hours. <laughs> I need to sleep, please. <coughs> Sorry. I'm but I want you. I'm tired, please. If you ask for my advice, I would say, girlfriend, put your eyes down and uncover what is going on between your nanny and your husband. What is the matter with you? How in the world do you think Derek would condescend so low as to sleep with that thing? That thing, an ordinary nanny. That thing like you call her. Will soon snatch your husband from you if nothing is done about it. Oh Jesus, I don't know how low you see my man, but Derek, in all his finesse, would never ever let himself strip and get naked with that girl. Derek, 
in all his finesse, would never ever get himself naked with that girl. So cheating is not for ugly guys, Abby. Girl, don't come knocking when it starts to unfold because I will remind you. Olivia, yes, are you sleeping with my husband? Me? No, no. Can you swear before the deadliest deity that you have never, ever gone pants down with my husband? Hey, Madam, I can swear. I've never seen August Nikides before. I can swear before any deity just to prove my innocence. If I find out that indeed you've been sleeping with my husband, father of my children, Olivia, on God, I swear you will not believe what will come your way. Hey, I swear, I have nothing to do with your husband. I have not seen August Nikidness before. If I have ever done that, let them fire me. Madam has started suspecting Oga and I already. I have to be careful of my dealings with Oga. Don't look down on anybody. Oh yeah, because you don't know tomorrow. Oh yeah, you don't know tomorrow. Oh yeah. I've relinquished Olivia of her duties as my children's nanny. Why would you fire her? I mean, why would you want to do that? I am no longer comfortable with her stay in my house. Let me give you a little advice. She does virtually everything in this house. Everything. I don't know how you expect to cope knowing that you are married to your job. I'm married to my job? What do you mean by that? Oh my word, look at his reaction. Hinchdeka was actually right. Look, if you fire her, how, how do you expect to cope? She does everything. I mean, oh, oh wait, oh. you intend to turn me into a babysitter? What is that supposed to mean? Derek. Look, Hilda, I am just tired of you giving me girls, girls in this house. I need a boy. I need a boy. Is that why you condescend so low as to sleeping with your children's nanny? What are you telling me? Are you accusing me of infidelity? Really? You know, nothing lasts forever. Derek. So this, this is coming from you? Is that how you talk to your husband? Hilda. Is that what you is that how you talk to me? My choco below. <laughs> My sugar can. Mm. Why not watermelon? <laughs> I like watermelon better than you can. Oh, you prefer watermelon? Yeah. My watermelon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think, uh, I know you enjoy working, mm -hmm. but you need to stop and come and give me some food before I go to one and chat. Hmm? Food? Mm -hmm. But I thought, <laughs> I thought you've taken your breakfast this morning, oh? Uh, well, I have, but what I'm talking about, Hmm? No, I don't know. You're supposed to be a naughty girl. Are you pretending? Oh, okay. yeah? I want that chocomillo between your chocotito. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, yeah. okay. Now I understand the kind of food you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are just pretending. Mm -hmm. I can see that. So let's mm. go. Okay, let's go there. But then you have to be very careful. What do you mean? <sighs> Your wife is becoming nosy. Could you believe that the other day she was asking me if I was if I'm actually sleeping with you? And, and, and what do you tell her? I practically denied it. Sharp, sharp. <laughs> you smart. <laughs> you smart. Oh, mm. yeah. <clears throat> Maybe all I'm saying is that since she has started suspecting us, we should take precautions because I cannot afford to put an end to this sweet affair. I'm enjoying every bit of it. Bed now, bed now. Doesn't matter. It has to be in my room and not your bed anymore. It has to be my own bed. That's fine. Bed now, bed. And no bed. Hey, oh, your bed now, no shit. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I need to go to all the chapters. What? How many rounds? Like how many rounds? Uh, this morning. Oh, like three. <laughs> Damn it, calm down. Why are you asking me to calm down? My wife has given me three girls in a row. And you're asking me to calm down? No, now. Is there a law that says that female children are not children? No, but three girls. Are they children? Are they not children? Please. Oh, Derek, you were all over the place asking me to plead with your wife for you. Even when she said she wasn't going to get married to you, it did not stop you. You didn't get off her back. I want to believe you married her because you loved her. So what is all of this? At the beginning of this marriage, you started complaining and whining about her career, about her inconsistency and all of that. When you of all people knew that she was a banker, even before you proposed to her. Wait, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Where is the relation? All that I'm saying, how is that related to what you are saying? All that you're saying, what are you not saying? What is your complaint right now? What are you complaining about? Are well, you not listening to all that I've been saying? Your point is baseless. Are you serious? My point is baseless? Derek, why do you keep coming to me? Why do you keep running to me each time you have crisis in your marriage? Are you serious? Are you the one saying this? I'm the one saying this, Derek. Let us call a spade a spade for once. Derek, why? 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 Did you run to me when you were busy gallivanting and sleeping with your nanny right on your matrimonial bed? Did you come asking for skills from me? Oh. Oh. You didn't expect me to know that, yes? You thought that would be hidden? Let me tell you, there is nothing hidden on that sun. Oh, yeah. You see the leg that works endlessly? It is the eyes that watches endlessly that will see it. Now I understand why I cannot mingle with your type. Why I just cannot be with your type. Because you won't submit to a man. You just won't. And you think because you're in this house, you're successful and that's it. And that's the reason why you are not married. Derek, if this is your definition, for submission then to hell with it to hell with it Derek how dare you come to my house to insult me the house that you will live be in remain and die single oh uh -huh. you think I don't see suitors oh, suitors you think I don't see suitors Derek where them did I have quite a handful of them I don't see and if you were a woman a submissive woman I would probably share some tips with you but even if you were a woman your ego, all of this, would not let you. I'm not a woman. You cannot be. I don't want to be a woman. You cannot be a woman. Get married. 
Grow some hair. Grow some sense. Carry wig. Carry sense. Carry anything. Put on. In fact, carry some of their eyelash. Put for head so that the men can see you and like you and propose. Submit. Get married. Because your house will not marry you. It won't. You think it's all about being a fine boy? Huh? It is men like you that makes me not even give it a thought. I cannot take this nonsense. Oh God, you are a baggage of national crisis. He called me, you raise your hand. Boy child is important, but gay child is a blessing. Who is who the matter? What Mara is ability? Huh? Please don't pretend. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't. What are you talking about? What is it? Have both of you conspired to give me just girls? Derek! What? Answer me! Are you not an evil woman? Do you not know the importance of a male child in every evil family? Are you trying to cut off my lineage? Why? Derek, you are blowing this whole thing way out of proportion. And it's not that deep yet. Okay, so you see nothing wrong with, with what I'm saying. Is that what it is? Huh? <laughs> Derek, I've had a long day. All I want to do now is get in the shower, take a bath, and go be with my babies. I'm, I'm saying something. This serious and you are yawning. Look, I need to tired. cut off all your tights with Indirika. Cut it off. What? I'm not kidding. That's my sister. So how is what you're saying going to work? I'm saying do not have any links with her again. Just cut it off. If you disobey me in this house, you will see the other side of me. And you don't want to see that. No, you don't. Because I'm so ready to throw you and your battalion of girls out in the streets. Don't try me. I'm not playing. to arrive school early today. Okay. Her school proprietors has complained several times that Kaima arrived school late. And I wonder what that is about because what do you really do in this house that will make that little girl go to school late? Ma, I'm very sorry. I promise it's not happen again. I'm sorry. sorry. It shouldn't happen again. Because I'm not particularly pleased about that information. Go inside. Open the gate. Here. Um, toasted bread with um, egg tomato sauce. Oh, baby, come on. This has to be for the girls. Don't want stuff like that. I need you to serve me something, you know, that will give me some energy, like pounded yam and bitter leaf soup. Something that will give me energy to mount you. Oh, baby, please. 
That can wait. Let me just take Kaima to school and come back. Oh, well, whatever it is, you can take her to school after you give it. Baby, right? please, no. It can wait. Let me just go and come back. Please. No way. No. Baby, no. No. Baby, please. Your wife warned that Kaima must not go to school today today. So can you please allow me to take her to school? I will come back and be with you. Yes, please. Olivia, I am the man of this house. Okay? I am the man of this house. I get what I want exactly when I want it. And right now, I want you. And I will get it. Hey, please. Please, don't do this. Come on. Let's go. Huh? You want to I'm sweeter. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> mm -hmm. I can have you all day. All day. All day. Am I getting another round? Mm -mm. You have to hold on to the one you had already. Let me take Kaima to school. No. Why no? Mm -mm. I don't know what they call the worth of your wife, so you have to hold on to it. No. Yes, I'm telling you, it has happened. I caught them. I caught them red-handed. I caught Derek, pants down with the nanny. I swear I'm not making this up. There are teachers I speak to you. I am not thinking of the possible way to eliminate both of them. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. What are you saying? I just got my husband cheating on me and you asked me to take it lying low. I want. I want. That stupid girl left my daughter unattended to. My daughter ought to be in school, but no, she's not. My daughter sat in the living room. Why the silly age of this? Right there, it's squashing my husband. I'll kill them. Nothing will give me greater joy than to kill them both. Kama's, Kama's friend Richard calls me every time, talking about how Kama's not in school, or she arrived late. And then, just when I thought... You know what, just never mind. Never mind. I'm, just, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to do something very, very... Stupid in response to this bullshit I just saw! You should go in there, pack all your bullshit, and get the hell out of my house. Right now! Madam Hilda, I am not going anywhere without my salary for this month. Simple. Your what? You have the nerves to talk to me about salary? After what you've done? I am not going anywhere without my salary. I just said it. You want me to pay you? Of course. Anywhere without my salary. I just said it. You want me to pay you? Of course. You want me to pay you for sleeping with my husband? I should fucking pay you 
for banging my husband on my matrimonial bed without my consent, without my knowledge. What the hell? What are you saying? You pay me. Let me just get out of here. What's this? And you they call me by my name? Of course. Hither, <clears throat> why are you getting yourself all worked up for nothing? I mean, you should be thanking me for taking good care of your husband for you in your absence. What? Yes. You should be thanking me for those cold weather had to be there for him when you least cared what because of him. Yes. You should be thanking me for making sure he stays at home instead of running into the hands of those slave queens out there. Oh my God. Hilda, you should be thanking me for keeping your husband at home. Yes. Making sure he fits well and had good quality sex. Should I still go on and mention them? Hilda, God gave you a sweet, handsome man as a husband. Instead of you to relax and marry the man God gave you, what did you do? You decided to be married to your job instead. This is banker. Oh, I'm out of here. Get out. Get out and stay far away from my home. Bye, sugar. Derek, how could you? How could you? How could you do this to me? I mean, if I should say I told me that you will come this and so low to her level, I would never have believed it. Where are you going, Derek? I asked you. What is what, what? What is what is this? What is this? Hilda, I am a man with blood running through my veins. I'm not just a boy walking around. Okay. One, I ask you to resign your job as a banker. You refused. Secondly, I ask for sex. And all you do is come up with billions of excuses oh, why you cannot. Ah! Oh, yeah. I'm not done. <gasps> you see, you don't take care of my needs and our needs. And you focus on your work. As if that is more important than what we share. Do you, do you know how I survived those cold nights? Do you know how I survived my sexual edges? Do you know what I do? No, you don't. Because you love your job more than you love us. Now, if Olivia is gone, hey, I have satisfied myself, okay? I'm next. Karen, you are unbelievable! What manner of a man are you? You, you were caught pet down with your ass open and you got no form of remorse for what your action has done to me in our marriage. Remorse? For what? Remorse for what? Sleeping with my nanny, my own nanny, the nanny that I paid, not somebody else's mind. I should be remorseful. That's bullshit. Okay? You are anyway. you believe me? You're not going anyway. No, Derek, you're not going anyway. You have to tell me why you did this. Why? Why did you do this, Derek? Why did you do it? Don't touch you. Why did you do this? You get foul and I'll touch you back. Don't. Don't touch me. Excuse me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I don't owe you, you owe me. anyone an apology. Derek, you owe me. This is my house. You, 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 you owe me. my wife. You owe me a then, 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 then do your duties. You owe me a bunch. You, you owe me. Stop it. Hide your face in ignominy. You of all people. Going to the lowest level, the level of a nanny, digging it down with her. You were just a dog. Don't call me that. I can take anything from you, but not name calling. Don't call me that. Okay, Derek. Okay. So give me just one good adjective I can use to qualify you. It doesn't matter what the adjective is. Don't call me names. Were, I won't take it. You are just a higgot. That is what you are. I think you should be talking to your sister, rather. Put some sense in her head. Otherwise, there is more coming from me. What else, Watch it. What, 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 what else are you going to do? I mean, what else are you going to do that will be more despicable than what you've done already? Listen to me, young man. If you are not going to be remorseful about this 
stupid and senseless act of yours, then I would like to have you get out of my house this minute. Don't let your success get into your head. Don't think that your business success is all there is. Don't give me a different interpretation. Don't. Don't try me. Don't try me! So why didn't you just go ahead to say that you feel threatened by a woman's success? Huh? Look at that now. Men. Oh, they will always find excuses for their actions. I told Hilda. I told her, but she wouldn't listen. Now she has to share her husband with, with, with a stupid nanny. Hilda, your husband's mistress that called you was the same Olivia, your former nanny. What? You mean Derek abandoned my children and I to go be with Olivia? I confronted her after I saw both of them together at the supermarket. At first, I, I could barely recognize her because she had completely changed from the nanny to a brand new hot chick. You needed to see her. Your husband is really spending money on that girl. <laughs> I resigned my job because that girl practically took over my home. He got an apartment in town where they both leave as man and wife. I remember Hilda. I remember kicking against the idea of getting such a beautiful girl as a nanny. But my darling friend kept on saying, oh no, my husband Derek is too responsible. He is too decent. He will not stoop as low as to a nanny. And now, Derek let me know that I have no source of income, no means of livelihood. He had to leave. Hilda. You need to get yourself something to do. To take care of you and the kids. I would. I would if I had the world without, but I don't. <laughs> That, that shouldn't be a problem. I, I, I can help with that. I can get you a store and give you 500,000 naira to stock it up with anything of your choice. I mean, you need to do something. You need to survive. Thank you. Jideka, thank you. Thank you. That is what sisters do. You know, I've not always been in support of a woman completely depending on a man or her husband to survive. This is why. <laughs> I resigned from my job and then Derek left. I have no sort of income. This I'll is, never forgive Derek. This is not the time to cry. You need to channel all of this energy into taking care of your children because Derek will marry Olivia eventually. That's if he has not already done so. I brought that girl into my home. I brought her into my home. And now she has that sleep. Is that my man? From the beginning of this marriage, 
Derek used to complain bitterly. He used to complain so much he wanted his wife around him. He wanted to be treated like a king. He wanted to be loved, fed, taken care of, pampered. He found all of that in Olivia because his darling wife was always away. He left because I didn't have a son, okay? Hilda, you are not the first woman who have only female children. Tell yourself some truth. Whatsoever you think about men, we need to understand that men are our superiors. That's the reason the Holy Scripture stated it categorically that women are weaker vessels. Tell that to the birds, girl. Listen, girlfriend. Women are made to be under men. And nobody must try to stop that. Uh-uh. I would like to drive home my point. So you need to follow me. And understand. Hmm? Women. A woman. You. Are a very. Lovely creator. Of course. A vessel of authority and power. God's choices creator. Thereby, without a woman, there is no single creation possible. Exactly. And nobody's disputing that fact in Judeca. Good. You see, we live in a new world. And in this world, where I live in, women must be given the same level of respect as men. Do you understand? No, I don't. All I'm advocating for here is gender equality. <laughs> well, my dear Njideka, now let me tell you this. There is nothing like gender equality here because the man is placed on top and that is the way. I mean, exactly the way God says it. Okay? Now, when the serpent deceived Eve to eat of the forbidden fruits. God didn't hold the woman responsible for that. Neither did he ask Eve what has she done. But rather, he asked Adam, the man, what have you done? You ate from the same fruits I forbid you from eating. Now girls, what does this sentence like? What did he get from this? That the man is the head. See, babes, I, <clears throat> I understand it from the angle Njida is trying to portray it. <laughs> really. The way this man really gets with the women to the background is way too bad. We need to be given the opportunity, the opportunity to do the same like the men. Exactly my point. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think so. Submission to your husband or to the man in your life isn't slavery at all. Rather, it is the hallmark of a virtuous woman. Get that, girls. Listen, we have to continue to push and never stop until we achieve a world free of competition for men. That's my point. A woman is not a man's problem. Hmm? <laughs> Today is on point. You see the girl child. The girl child is a very powerful creator. 
It's about that time where we create initiatives to support her, to help her grow, to help her achieve her dreams and aspirations in life. Because we have people in different sectors. Most of them are not women. Now we need to begin to push the woman into those places. Help her acquire skills. Help her become better by gaining professional knowledge, by going through professional trainings. Okay, look at the technology sector. We don't really have much women there. We need to push women into that sector. We need women to be at the top in different sectors. Do you understand? Being a woman alone is a superpower. I swear. Because the world would have meant nothing without the women. Yeah. You see, the difference between marriages of the old and the recent marriages are that in as much as our mothers would have loved to speak, they didn't know how to. Thus, they died in silence. But you see, women of now, they know how to, where to, and why to speak up. So they cannot die in silence. You get? Njideka, you need to understand that the man remains the head. But as long as we modern women keep trying to usurp his leadership, marriages will keep packing up. Okay? Am I communicating? Mm -mm. You still don't get it, girl. You don't get it. She doesn't get it. Now listen, girls. Submission isn't slavery, like I said before. Neither is it being without a voice. Submission is still the way to go. It's recognizing his headship and honoring his leadership. Yeah. Girlfriend. You need to be humble. Humility is a virtue. Being humble and submissive to your man doesn't rob you of your self-esteem. So girl, yeah, you need to pipe low. Be under a man. You still don't get it. I do. Nobody's contesting the position of a man. I know you will drag. Nobody is. All I'm saying is, let a woman have a voice. That's all. Do you get? I also want you to understand that a man is the head. I. I love you. <laughs> You're not giving me green light at all. Listen, all I want is for us to come together as man and wife. What do you want me to say? Something positive at least. Ernest, I will not marry you. You have been saying this more than a thousand times without a specific reason as to why. I mean, why? Ernest, I'm a woman who is okay on her own. Listen, I have achieved so much independently without the help of a man. I can beat my chest to confidently say that I have attained the highest level of success independently on my own. The same level that some men, when they attain, they turn the world upside down. I am self-sufficient, Ernest. I don't need a man. Angelica, listen. Irrespective of what you think of yourself, the truth remains that you need a man. What for? Huh? To feed me? Clothe me? House me? 
Buy me exotic cars? What exactly do I need a man for? <laughs> you see? You cannot answer that, yeah? But that is it. That right there is the reason I love you. See, you are an independent woman. And I can say you are a colossus. You're more of an asset than a liability. And tell me, what man wouldn't want an asset? You're my kind of woman, and that is why I want you. Come on. Ernest. Ernest. Yeah. You are suave. You're a perfect gentleman. Tall, dark, chocolate skin, cute smile. And you are very, very choicy with your words. Plus, you have an amazing intonation. But you see, all of this will still not make me marry you. So, Ennis, are you trying to tell me that Njideka rejected your proposal yet again? Well, honestly, I don't know what else to do. I don't know how else to convey the message to Ndideka that I love her and I want her to be mine. I don't, I'm just... Come on, Ernest. Stop whining and look elsewhere. Ndideka is not the only beautiful girl in this town. There are lots of beautiful chicks, well-to-do beautiful chicks, that are ready and willing to say yes to your proposal and marry you today today. Why waste time? Well, unfortunately for them, it's Njideka that I want. Uh, why Njideka? Must it be her? What's so special about this Njideka anyways? Is she more beautiful than I am? I thought <laughs> Njideka is your friend. I mean, why are you just speaking ill about her? <laughs> Njideka, my friend. That girl that feels on top of the world. Like she's more superior than every other person. Is she the only importer we have in this town? Is Njideka the only chick who travels to Pakistan to buy textiles? Eh? Even the woman that owns this bar is far richer. Like far, far richer than Njideka. But you wouldn't know because she doesn't brag about well, Njideka is a woman I want. So I don't appeal to you? Is that what you're indirectly telling me? What's so special about Njideka anyways? What does she have that I don't have? Anyways, well, continue waiting for her to probably change her mind towards you in the nearest future. Well, that I intend to do. I shall wait for as long as she For she's... how long? Are you going to continue waiting for Njideka? For I am certain she may probably not say yes to you. Because I obviously know that you've been on her neck for a very long time, my dear Ernest. Think. Think. Babe, what? Why are you uncomfortable? What exactly is biting you? Go ahead and let it out. Dorothy, scoffing and not saying anything about it is not the best way to handle situation. I notice you've been like this ever since we came in. Babe, spill it. What is it? Talk to us. Babes, I'm worried about Njideka and the attitude of claiming to be more superior to every one of us. What about Njideka? What has she done again? Dorothy, wait. Which Ernest are you talking about? 
Is it the earnest we know? Yes, ma. The earnest we all know. Yes. Oh. Actually, he complained to me about um, Injideka not accepting to marry him. Do you know one thing? This guy refused to look at any other girl's face. I mean, he refused to pick any other girl. <laughs> he said he will wait for Unjideka as long as it takes. Can you beat that? So, how does that affect you? It affects me, oh babe. Huh? Have you forgotten Unjideka is our friend and sister? We all came from one village. I mean, we should talk some senses into her. Yes, please. <laughs> Um, I'm struggling. I'm struggling so hard to understand why a grown-up woman like Njideka mm. thinks a particular guy is not good enough for her. And you bother your head about that. I mean, what is it? Why won't I bother myself? Eh? Why has she refused to say yes to Ernest? Mayona, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. Eh? <laughs> Stop laughing. It's not funny. Dorothy, what exactly is your problem? Why are you taking Panador over Injideka's edict? If she doesn't want any so, how is that supposed to be your business? It is my business. Really? Because he said no other woman appeals to him. Then bounce. I mean bounce. Yes, bounce. Mm. Babe. I don't understand why you constantly behave as though you came into the city to babysit Njideka. Why do you allow her first to bother you so much? I mean, Njideka is old enough to know what she wants and to handle her affairs herself. Can you just leave her alone? Mm. <laughs> oh. I can see someone wants Ernest by all means. Just hold it right there. Right? <laughs> In fact, why would I want him? Yes. Oh. Really? Well, the more I try to poison his mind against Angelica, he still goes deep into her and doesn't want to let her off his head. See, you guys should try and understand this thing, man. Dorothy, we all know how deep Enes loves Angelica. I mean, it didn't just start today. Right from way back. Hence his willingness to wait. So the earlier you understand this, this and accept it, the better for you. Dorothy, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you for crying out loud? You have your own man. You have your own, in fact, you have men. Oh. You have to dominate. Okay. Alajida and Juma, mm -hmm. and many others. I mean. Can't you get one of them to slide a ring into your finger and let Ernest be? Let him be. Dorothy. You think you're the only one who wants Ennis, right? I also wanted Ennis at one point. Obviously. But since I could not get him to myself, the babe waka. I oh mean, my what? <laughs> wow. You <laughs> Evelyn. Even you? With your handfuls, you want Ennis. I don't. Are you serious? Amanda! Stop the pretense. Don't mind her. We all wanted Ernest exactly. at one point or the time. Exactly. Ah. Please, I beg to differ. Please. I mean, what is it about this Ernest of a guy that every baby is clamoring to have him? I mean, I don't understand. Yeah, a guy that goes for the car. Cute guy. Oh, please. Who is who the matter? I, Bemina, suffered perennial insomnia. A bad your present condition. I don't understand. Ichi, you don't have a son of your own. It's quite unfortunate that your late wife gave birth to just girls. Bemina, I have told you a million times that I am fine. You cannot be fine, Ichi. You cannot be fine and comfortable with girls that will be married out someday. And then you'll be left alone in your little world. I, you need a son. A son to continue with your lineage. I understand your concern. But I told you not to bother about me. As you can see, I have girls that are taking proper care of me. 
I gave them good education. A man can give to his children. Now I'm reaping the fruit of my labor. My first daughter, Njideka, is a man in the body of a woman. She is ten sons in a girl. Doubtless she is. But I want you to know that she will never take the position of a male child. Women. She single-handedly built this house. But she for is me. a woman. And she will be married out someday. You need a son, Ichi. Women. My children, those girls, are taking proper care of me. All they are doing is to make sure that I don't miss their late mother. Yes. Coming back to your late wife and the circumstances surrounding her death. She died untimely. It's quite unfortunate. The news of your late wife shook the entire kingdom. But what I am trying to say, Chase, is high time you married another wife to give a male child. Since your late wife was trying to bet your twin boys. Bueno, I don't need another wife. Get it into your greasy brain. It's your I put it to you that you need a son. Ikena is never your son, it's your adopted. I have a son. He is in aviation university and you know it. Obina is never your son, but you are adopted. Adopted or no adopted, he is my son and he will continue my lineage. He's not your blood. He's not your blood. He is my son. Get it in your greasy brain. He is my son. If you watch her, mm -hmm. there is something you need to understand. We, the people of Obuduku, are warriors. This is not just something that is coming to the limelight. It is something that is established over the years. Yes. That we are warriors in Obuduku, and there is no way we are going to shy away from wars. No. I agree with you, when I say. But should we go to war over a matter that we can resolve amicably? What can we resolve amicably? Uh, what are you talking about? The people of Isuguzo think they can use the court to take the land. Exactly. Exactly. That is what they believe. They believe they can use the courts. I even got that they have engaged the services of a senior advocate of Nigeria to represent them. <laughs> but we'll show them something. We'll show them there is something mightier than the, the, the courts. <laughs> and what could that be? Oh no, is it war? There is nothing good in going to war. War will come, let me tell you. War has to come if they don't behave themselves. Yes, war has to come. Let me tell you the strategy we'll use. First of all, we'll detail our warriors to sack their vigilante office. And then we'll mount the flag of a Boduku Progressive Union there. And you feel the people will not mount resistance that will possibly lead to casualties? We are ready for casualties. Nkwasha, we are ready for casualties. You barely have daughters who can be married out. And you don't know the value of lands. Will you shut up your mouth? Don't you bring my daughters into this discussion. Yes, I have daughters. But my daughters are better off. Other daughters in this kingdom. See you go never. See you go never. Will shut up? Make sure never. Who are you talking? Shut up your mouth. What are they achieving in this kingdom? Who are you? Who are you? Hey, hey, hey. Look at you. Men in castle should behave themselves. We need to understand we are here for something serious. We are in the middle of a very serious meeting. And the others in castle should be very, very mindful of the kind of languages they use. Igwe. I heard your father is busy going around the kingdom, bragging about his daughter's achievements, how they are doing better than every other sons and daughters of Obuduku kingdom. I mean, can you beat that? My father, of course. Enough! You dare call my father 
the traditional prime minister of Oboduku Kingdom. A liar. Where are your manners? <laughs> Dorothy. What is come of you? That a fellow cabinet member would disrespect my father because he thinks he doesn't have a male child and you expect him to act like everything is okay. Is that enough reason for him to start singing and disturbing the whole neighborhood about his daughter's and adopted son's achievements? Oh, please. Why do I... Why do I sense jealousy here? Jealous of who? Of myself and my sibling's achievement. Why would I? Do you make more money more than I do? Well, Dorothy, it is glaring. It is written all over you, girl. You are simply jealous. Oh, please. You built a house here in Asaba and also in the village for your father. So you think no one else can do such? Oh, girl, if it is pretty much easy, why can't you do it? At oh, least build, we'll build a little cubicle for don't yourself. Don't worry, don't worry. I am going to do that pretty soon. I will shock you. Can you guys just stop? Please stop! Is this why we are here? What is all this for crying out loud? Dorothy, competing with someone who is totally not in competition with you. Does it make any sense? <laughs> like seriously? You really think I'm in competition with you, right? <laughs> now let me tell you this. I will not take one more insult from you again. <sighs> Dorothy. Dorothy, my dear. If you like. Sleep with all the men. In this world. It still will not get you to where Jadega is. It won't. You are obviously mad. Oh, you are the mad one. You are stupid. You <laughs> please, please, please. You both should just stop. Don't Excuse please. Excuse you. Let me tell this lady some truth. Listen <laughs> to me. Listen to me, young woman. It is high time you stopped sleeping with everything that you see. You hear me? Do not sleep with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It will get you nowhere. Waka. Same to you, darling. In fact, same I to cannot you. have you insult me ever again. Oh, yes, I am living because the truth is bitter. Before Don't you leave, you think you're, you're speaking nonsense. Oh, well, the truth hurts. So if you want to leave, then get out. And you think you're speaking the truth out of my house, girl. You're speaking nonsense. Babe, babe, hold on. Look, Look at, at her now. now. What is what? Do you want to no, join no. her? Wait, you guys should not do this. If you want to join her, then get out already. Don't Tell her the truth. No, don't do that. You we guys, are, we are sisters. You guys stop painting pictures. Learn to tell people the truth. When you put on a short dress, it is not because you want a man, but because you love your body. What is that now? Women now thinking that men are the genesis and the revelation of their lives? Oh God, this is so good. Dorothy. Dorothy. See, honestly, eh? I, I, I don't believe Njideka just insulted me. She just gave me the insult of my life. Oh, Dorothy, can you stop? Don't ask me to stop. Just hold it right there. Were you not the way she was insulting me? Were you not the way she was hurrying insult on me and my father? I mean, who, who, who does she think she is anyways? Eh? Who does that? See, um, if you ask me, um, Njideka is a successful lady, no doubt. But I don't think she, she has to feel more superior than any one of us here. Thank you! Exactly my point. Yes, because she's a graduate and an importer. So, Dorothy! Don't correct me, please. Now tell me, are you not a graduate? Why this rancor between two sisters? Hold it right here. Point of correction. Ntideka is not my sister and can never be my sister. Oh yes, I said that. Dorothy, don't do me. no use because of anger. Say words that should not be said. You know what? I honestly blame myself 100% for following you girls to this house. If not, where would she have seen me to hold insult on me? Yes. Yeah, okay, fine. 
So because she built a house here and also in the village, so we should run and hide our faces in dishonor because the almighty Injideka feels she has built something no one else has ever built. You know what, guys? I'm out of here. Oh, please go. You're always outing of this place. Sorry, I think we need to leave. Barbara just left. Were we supposed to leave with her? Oh, please. Dorothy. You need to start talking right now. What happened back then? Why are you this angry? Finally go after Ujideka. And I will render her useless in this town. And when night starts, don't stop me. Dorothy, <sighs> you really need to be careful with the things you say. Your utterance can put you into trouble. Seriously? Yes. Do I look like I care? I honestly do not care anymore. Okay? When well, you're not there. When you not there, when she accused me of being envious of her father and her miserable self. I mean, who is Indideka anyway? Who is she? Apart from sleeping with the importers in Onachame Market, what else does she do? Um, Nothing. Um, wait, wait, um, Dorothy, wait, wait, wait. I want to, you girls, please, can you girls make this easy for me? Because I don't get it. What happened? What happened back there? Why are you this angry? What is it? I'm sorry, Dorothy, but you are shifting from the argument. How do you mean? Injideka is an importer, and we all know that. Saying that she slept with men and importers, babe, that's an uncharitable statement. Whose side are you on anyways? Oh, um, Dorothy, <laughs> I feel she's telling you the truth. Because you're the one in the business of going down with the man. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now I need you both to leave me alone. We are not leaving your house. Dorothy, someone needs to talk sense into your brain. <laughs> but hold on, wait, wait. I want you to understand something. Are you angry because Sinjideka told you the truth or... Enough! What do you mean by the truth? Do you know the truth when you say it? Now, the both of you should leave my house this minute before I throw you out myself. Leave! Are you you have a problem. Are you... Okay, please. No, no, no. Imagine the braggarts bragging about the old place that she's an independent lady who does eventually everything for herself without having to go pants down with any man. <sighs> and Evelyn, on the other hand, thinks I'm a cheap whore for sleeping with any man just to prove to that Njideka who thinks she's a Miss No All. Oh. Hmm. Imagine, ever since the completion and the opening ceremony of her mansion, she has been feeling someone on top of the world. Oh. No, Jideka can never be on top of me. Even if it means me sleeping with the whole man in this world just to own a house, I will gladly do it. Yes. I deserve, Dorothy Joa deserve a house. Nchideka can never and will never be on top of me. Never. No. Can she? It's not possible. Who is who that matters? What Mara is ability? Start talking. Can I start talking words? Was it not Mark that just dropped you off? <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, is it not the same man that you turned down his proposal? Okay, because I turned down his proposal, you rushed to make him yours. Honestly, you missed the best man in the whole world. I mean, 
that guy knows how to take care of a woman and we are planning to take it to the next level because <laughs> you are saying all this about a man you don't even know well i know him enough to want to be with him yeah. really yes <laughs> Dorothy, you are the sweetest thing I've ever tasted in a long while. <laughs> so, Chief, that's to tell you that it's time for you to get me a mansion. A mansion? Yeah, I need a house of my own. Isn't it high time? What do you need the house for? What, what, what happened to the one you're living in? Chief, that one is a rented apartment. It belongs to another. Chief, I need my own personal house. Dorothy, you have to manage what you have for now. After all, business is no longer booming the way it used to. Chief, I'm tired of managing that house. I mean, you, you, you need to see the way Injideka is feeling on top of herself like... Too superior to every one of us. Chief, please, I really need my own mansion. So, this is all about inch take, right? Chief, yes, no. I mean, see, you, Chief, inch take has been insulting your girlfriend, though. Like, the insult is too much. She feels like we cannot get our own mansion, too. You need to make me proud. People. Girls, why is this unnecessary competition you girls engage in? It's not worth it. Hmm? It's not. Chief, it's worth it all. It's worth it. I, I can't continue taking insult from her because of her mansion. Chief, I need to prove to her that I have you. Chief, please, I know you can do this. Buy me my own house. Dorothy, everyone is this Asaba knows Inji Deka to be a successful businesswoman and a go-getter. She belongs to the high and mighty. Hey. Going into unnecessary competition with her is idiocy. Yes. Chief, but you're a money bag. You belong to the high and mighty in the society. Oh, come on. Chief, you're worth more than trillions. You can actually get me a house in GRE if you so wish. Chief of Fong. course, I am a money bag. But you just have to make do with what you have for now. Just give me some time, please. Chief, why ask me to wait when you can actually buy me this house with a snap of your finger? <laughs> you are being a very sweet girl. I have done what you wanted <laughs> of me. No, Chief, I need help. Good afternoon, Papa. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I can see. This one, everyone remembered me today. I hope... Um, How do you mean? Well. Um, your brother just called me a few hours ago from his school. Oh. I just throw the chair. How is he doing? Oh, he's doing great. He's doing well. That's good to me. I came because of your, your monthly of Ah, Njideka. Who said girls are not you? Oh, it's very envious of what God is using you girls to do in my life. Uh, eh? If they like, they can be envious of you. I do not care. What I know is that you are now reaping the fruit of your labor. Exactly. When I was training you girls, they said I was wasting my resources. And now the same girls 
the one taking proper care of me in my old age. That's what I'm talking about. That's reaping the fruits of your labor that oh, I'm talking yes. about. Oh, yes. That reminds me. I heard that Ichie Barnabas and Omo are pushing that we go to war with Isibuzo Kingdom. Exactly. And I bluntly kicked against that. And Barnabas has the effrontery to see that why I vehemently kicked against war is because I don't have male children. <laughs> I heard it, Papa. You did? Yes. From who? Oh no, whose daughter who's in Asaba with me? Dorothy? Yes. Papa, and what you told them was plain truth. War is bad. Very bad. Ono who that is pushing we go to war. His son, Emeka, is far off in South Africa. So whose children does he expect to come out and war? That was exactly what Ichim Bamalo said in the meeting of the elders in council. Papa, I need to go to the palace and see the king. We will not go to war. Oh yes. We won't go to war. It's not good. War is. Papa, you may need to brief me on what the king said. Oh. What do you think? You might believe that the king said in the meeting of the elders that we are not there for comparison. He said that? Yes. Can't you see they're all jealous of you? I know. <laughs> Papa, please. Do not develop hatred for them because of this. Me? Oh, please. I don't have any reason to do so. You know, it's funny that Dorothy does the same thing. If she sees me buy a dress, she buys the same dress. She even goes as far as buying the same color. If I buy a car, she makes sure that she buys that same car. Imagine being in competition with me for nothing. Since she does not have anything to do with herself other than engaging in an unnecessary competition with you, let her buy a car for her father, the or no. Let her also build a house for him. <laughs> My daughter, Anamaka. Onye Kamadakachie. Papa, forget about Dorothy. She will eventually get tired. Hmm. I would like to go to the palace. You keep saying you want to go to the palace. The question is, why? When I come back, I'll tell you why. But for now, I have to unpack all the food stuff I brought that is still in the boat since <laughs> if I is not back from school. You don't want to bother your head over that. He will do just that when he comes back from school. Papa. Oh no, well, I am sure you know Njideka, daughter of Chief Nkocha. <laughs> I know Njideka very well. Uh, but what I don't know is what she's doing before the king. Uh, well, she called me to say there is something she wants to discuss with, uh, with me. It's a good thing you are here because whatsoever that is good for the ear of the king is equally good for the ear of the Ono. So, Njideke, can you proceed? Thank you very much, Igwe. I came owing the news that this kingdom is planning to go to war with Isuguzo kingdom. Igwe, I'm sorry, but we may have to retreat. Because war is not a good thing. There are many ways to kill a rat. I would suggest that we find amicable ways to settle our land dispute. Other than go to war, there's no need sending the youths to go out there and die. History has it that both kingdoms are brothers from same parents. Why do we have to go to war? Uh, Angelega, you see, you were making a very good point. For you were stating the obvious. By the point, you spoiled everything. We are going to war to retrieve what rightly belongs to us. That is all. Oh no, well, you should have waited for me to finish before you attacked me at least. Njideka. I don't know who changed now. 
I will not sit here and allow a male woman. What am I even talking about? A male girl interfere in matters affecting the kingdom. No. Oh no, Wuchi Ejina. You can call me any name that you choose to. I don't have a problem with it. But remember that war is a very dangerous thing to embark on. War is not good. War is death. Njideka, we must go to war with the people of Isiguzo. Our brothers, you mean? Whatever. The people of Isiguzo have beaten more than they can chew. And we have to face them with... Oh no, I hope that a Mecca, your son, is coming from South Africa to come and lead other youths to war. Mecca, my son, is not uh, leaving South Africa to come back and, uh, I mean, <laughs> to fight. He can leave his wife, his South African wife, of course, and children to come back here to lead the youth to war. It's not going to, it's not possible. You see, this is what I'm talking about, Igwe. In Mecca, your son will not leave South Africa to come down here and lead other youths to war. So whose children do you want to go and die? In Mecca, my son, is not a youth, for goodness sake. He is a family man. Says who? No. Oh no, who says who? Since you love war, since you want war, and since war runs through your veins, then your son, Emeka, should come down from South Africa and lead other youths to go to war. Jideka, I hope you are not intending to insult me. Igwe, I will not sit back here and watch a mere girl. I will not sit down here and battle wars with her. Hey, no, please. I, I, I need you to calm down. Calm down. I understand why you are angry, but I, I'm going to handle it. In Jideka, I need you to understand something. That this area you are delving into is an area that is exclusively reserved for men alone. Damn, a, a, a woman like you should not actually, you know, double into that. With due respect, Igwe, I came to see you. Not to know who... I, I, I know exactly what you are driving at, but I need you to understand something. It is something that the men are already looking into. Not only is men that are looking into this. Now, people have this saying that a snake seen by only one person has a way of actually transforming into a python. Exactly. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I know exactly that you are aware that um, nobody has the exclusive monopoly of wisdom. That is where we have men in council. And we have met as men in council to deliberate on this issue. And your father was even in, in attendance. And we resolved that the best thing to do is to face the people of Isiguzo to teach them a lesson of their lives. We are going to sack the vigilante of, of, of Isiguzo kingdom. And then we are going to mount the flag of Ubuduku Progressive Union right in their land to teach them that we are the owners of even the place where they are living. That is what you are going to do, and that is what you resolve. Of Don't worry. Uh -huh. Someone is here telling me that we should relax, uh, sit back, and watch watch those those refraps, those non entities, those useless cowards take what really belongs to us. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Do you know who changing now like this? What happened? Do you know that bitterness has completely taken over Dorothy's father? He was talking to me as though he had personal issues with me. Was he there at the palace when you got there? Yes, he was. Oh God, you would have changed the topic. Why do I have to change the topic, father? It's even a good thing he was there. At least I was able to drive home my point that we shouldn't go to war. War is not good. No kingdom has ever remained the same after war. They don't know. We were there during the Nigerian Civil War. At least I've been able to tell the two important people in this kingdom. It's not like I'm going to war with them. But I feel it's my place to educate them on the disadvantages of war and then try to make them turn their mind against it. 
War is not good, Papa, and we will not go to war. I'm tired. Judeka, what are you saying about Ernest's proposal? Papa Ernest is the least thing on my mind that I want to talk about right now. Are you saying you don't love him enough for him to marry you? I'm not ready for marriage. When I am ready, maybe I will give it a thought. And you think he'll be waiting for you? If he cannot, then he can go ahead and move on with his life. I'm not ready for marriage. When I'm ready, I'll give it a thought. As for my sisters, if they have somebody who's asking for their hand in marriage, you better think about it. Age is not on your side. Who is who the matter? What matter is ability? Everybody thinks I do not want to get married, and that is the reason I do not want to give any man my heart. Oh. <laughs> marriage is the least thing on my mind right now. With the rate of divorce cases and domestic violence in marriages, do I want to give it a thought? Hell no. A man has to be tested, proven, and trust it before I can say yes. Hello, Njideka speaking. How may I help you? Oh, Ernest. Hi. You're outside my gate? Oh, okay. The gate man will open the gate for you right now. Okay, okay. That's, that's okay. What a wonderful edifice you have here. Oh, hard work pays, you know. Of course. <laughs> you have really carved a niche for yourself. You can say that again. <laughs> I was actually getting set to go see my customers at the market before your call came in. Oh, I am sorry about that. That's okay. Come on inside. Let's go, please. So you own this mansion? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Forgive me, I am surprised. You are? Yes, of course I am. I mean, I have not really seen a woman who is determined to make it against all odds. Of course, without the help of a man or men. <laughs> Ernest, my parents have five of us. All girls. Yeah. My late mother tried everything humanly possible to have at least a boy. But she died while giving birth to twin boys. Herself and the twin None of them made it out alive. So you see, my father decided to train us to the highest level that we would like to go. But that decision of his met a lot of opposition from men in our community who felt that training a girl child was a total waste of resources and time considering the fact that she will get married and end up in her husband's kitchen 
or the other room, like they say. But my own stubborn father, Chigun Kocha, <laughs> he never paid attention to them. He went ahead and trained us to the best of his capacity. And today, oh, my father is the envy of all men in our kingdom. My father has a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse who works in the United States of America. An engineer who works with an oil firm. And of course, my successful self. We have a brother, adopted, in the School of Aviation. Wow. I like the sound of that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you related to one engineer, Cheesy Nkwacha? Cheesy Ram? She's my younger sister. As a matter of fact, she's my immediate younger one. <laughs> you know her? Of course. She's my employee. I know her. Wait for a second. Are you engineer Ernest Obidi the oil magnet Cheesy works for? Well, what more can I say? It's it's a small world. Yes. away. Why? Do you expect me to jump at your marriage proposal? But at least you should give me a straight answer. I won't marry you. <sighs> Listen, you can you can ask your sister about me. She knows me very well, and at least she will not lie to you. Ernest, I do not know you. I cannot jump into your arms like that. That my sister knows you is not enough reason for me to say yes to your marriage proposal. I won't. At least you can ask her. Listen, if you truly mean what you just said, then allow me the time to know you well enough. I don't know you, Ernest. <sighs> okay. It's okay. Ernest has been on me for a while now. But that's not a reason that I should look his direction. Why do people even think I don't want to settle down? <laughs> anyway, that's not really important right now. Mm. But that doesn't mean that any of my sisters who have a serious man in their lives shouldn't settle down. Hello, Mrs. Happiness. Oh, yes, I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, good, good, good. How is your business? 
Oh, my business? Oh, business is great. It's moving small, small. <laughs> what? Um, yes. Kashmai and Tessil? Two bundles each? Yes, yes, it's available. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for your patronage. Thank you. Business is good. A large dan tumor. Boo boo. Please now. I know you can do this for me. I'm your babe. And asking you to buy me a house is not too much to ask, or is it? <sighs> Alaji, I've done so much for you to get a good house from you. I mean, come on. Remember all the travelings and you know now, eh? I was always there for you to warm your bed. And I even went as far as connecting my friends to you just to warm your bed and also to prove my love for you. I know you can do this, please. Come on, Alaji. If you can do it, why not go ahead and do it for me? Okay, so where are you now? Yes, I can. Yes, yes, I can meet you up there right now. Okay. men are pissed too. I don't get it. You mean you're here thinking about men? Hey, when are you going to rise above all this? Please, Evelyn. I am not ready for your blabbing right now. You know what? I have serious issues disturbing me right now. Really? And I need to focus, please. Really? Yeah. So what is it, if I may ask? Babes, I need to own a house. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Dorothy. When are you going to stop this your competitive lifestyle with Injedeka? Are you stupid? Why must you mention Injedeka's name here? Eh? Dorothy, you don't have a job or a business to your name, yet you crave to own a house. I beg! For which source? Eh? Do you think by sleeping with this man you can have it? <laughs> Well, girlfriend, sorry to disappoint you, okay. okay? This girl here is the latest textile importer in town. <laughs> yes, I am going into textile importation, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny? Parati, you're simply pathetic. Oh, you too, my darling. See you. Yeah. Business. Mm -hmm. I bet signatures don't finish. I like you, they don't finish. Dorothy business. I beg you, beg you, beg you, tell me something. My dear, all I know is that very soon you're going to be addressing me as importer <laughs> and exporter. <laughs> you have completely transformed mm -hmm. from a banker right. to a full-blown businesswoman. Mm -hmm. That amazes me. I know. I mean, yeah, I'm killing it. <laughs> but that's not to say that what I'm doing now is rocket science. When you place it in comparison to my formal line of duty. I mean, as a banker, I was trained to manage other people's finances. And now that I'm a businesswoman, thanks to you, <laughs> I have um, traders and importers who supply goods to me on credit. And that to me, it's the same thing as pretty much having their finances being managed by me while I make profit off of it. 
and you right. are doing so well. Yeah, it. it's like an advancement from what I used to do, yeah. You've built so much goodwill. Yeah. Importers are now willing to give you goods worth up to 100 million naira. That's correct. On credit. That is correct. That is something. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so grateful to you. Because if it wasn't for you, <laughs> Derek's ugly plans would have worked. Can we try not to talk about Derek? Yeah, sure. The most important thing is that you have a roof over your head and mm. you are doing very well in business. Yes, I am doing well. <laughs> but now, can we talk about you? What do you mean, let's talk about me? <laughs> Why? Talk about me I, I want to talk about you. We, ne we hardly talk about you. We almost never talk about you. Are you ready? Wow. <laughs> Why aren't you married? Why are you still single? Because I know you. I know you very well. I know your what. And then some of the traders and importers that I do business with, they know you too. And they have confirmed that you're bigger than them. And I also know that you have suitors all over the place trying to swim their way through. So what the hell? Why aren't you married, girl? Can we leave this topic for another time? No. We'll talk about it now. Hilda. Listen. I want to see you stand on your feet. I am on my feet. I want to see you succeed in business so that you can prove to men like Derek that women can actually achieve a lot without them. I'm on the right track already. But you, you still need a man. I'll know the man when I see one. Angelica, you're indeed a wonderful woman. An exceptional woman, extraordinary. Chief Dominic, if I say that, I understand all of this, then I'm a blatant liar. In Jedeka, you see, you are just too way bigger than who people portray you to be. I don't understand. Sit. Oh, thank you. Why are you using those words on me? In Jedeka, you are a woman per excellence. Second to none. And I'm beginning to see you in a different light. You see, I won't ask you to explain what you mean by beginning to see me in a different light because you may delve into areas that I will not be willing to travel. I know what you are trying to avoid. But suffice it to say that you are just so amazingly good. You are with me, you have to give me something far better than this. Yes. And why in the world would I do that? Are you any better than Hilda is? I left Hilda because she was giving me females. Decided to be with you so that you can give me males. And you're also giving me females. And you've concluded I cannot give you males. For how long should I wait? How many years should I wait? You've given me two girls already. Maybe the male can come, I know that. We'll start producing the males and then you can ask for a bigger house. Good afternoon, neighbor. Yes, hello, afternoon. You must be the owner of this house. Yes. I'm your neighbor. Oh, that's nice. 
As you can see, we're almost completed and very soon we'll be real neighbors. And who says that? Who is ready to be neighbors with people who is already showing themselves? Baby, we are likely to rent this place out, please. I am not ready to compete with these weirdos. And that's it. You don't have to call me names, my dear. I only came to say hi to a neighbor. And please, hold your hi to yourself. I don't need it. Let's go, baby. Barbara! Decker. I know you're not good with guesses, but you should be able to get a bit like four on my way here. Can you just make it easy for both of us by telling me the people you saw and why you think it's important that I know them? Okay. Let me make it easy for us. I ran into Derek and his new wife on my way here. Derek! <laughs> what makes you feel I should waste my precious time talking about Derek? A character that left his wife to go and be with a maid. I should talk about that kind of a person. Derek has actually married that girl. <laughs> and from what I saw, both of them are just like cat and dog. Why? Is he no longer obsessed with her? Obsessed? Hey. He was openly telling her that she has not been able to reproduce male children for him, therefore she has no right to make demands. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Derek. Derek and his senseless obsession with male children. Oh. Where did you even see them? There is this duplex that is being built just at the end of my clothes, next to my gate. I kept wondering who owns it and finally it turns out he's the owner. I saw them today. So he's not even ready to go back home to his wife and children. <laughs> Jideka, if you ask me, I would say, Hilda should go ahead and divorce that guy. I mean, exactly, especially now that she's doing well for herself already. She should divorce that guy and move on. I hate that seven letter word, divorce. I hate it, girl. So, are you trying to say Hilda should continue waiting for that fool who abandoned her for three years now? No, now, come on. She has to divorce that guy. You see, all of this, all this is the reason I haven't said yes to any man. Because I cannot even imagine myself going through this nonsense. I mean, there is not a single man who has a reasonable attitude or sense. They don't exist these days. The more reason Hilda should divorce that Derek. She has to. Oh no, who of you so? The only reason will allow you to live in one piece is because you brought the one of this. I am happy that you know that. And it will be good if you always remember that we are from the same ancient roots. Um oh no who of Isiguzo. You have brought the wand of peace already. The ideal thing to do is for you to go and allow us to deliberate and get back to you. Ah, hold on, hold on, Ichi. That is not going to be the case. Hmm? There is no need for that. In fact, there is actually no need to be labor discuss the fantasies about we to be in I will give you the answer. Oh, no. I'll give you the answer, the response of this kingdom right here, right now. Um, uh, oh no, Uchejina, I'm not in a haste. It would be good if I go and allow you deliberate and get back to me. No, there's no need for that, like I said before. Hmm? I, oh no, Uchejina, on behalf of the Igwe in council. I have decided that the only way peace will reign between us is for that land to be shared into two. Two equal parts. We as the head we choose first. And then you as the tail will take the other. But you as the tail will handle the sharing. 
Unu wa geke. Abuzo bulu. Unu e woleze. Azitaya. Yotako. Are we not supposed to let this ambassador of peace leave so that we can deliberate as cancel and get back to them? Eh, uh, Chief Nkwacha, it's already too late. Do you know who has already taken a stand on this issue? And I am adopting the stand of do you know who as the stand of this body. Ono wo fu isiguzo. If actually you want peace, then that large expanse of land must be divided into two equal parts. You, the people of Isiguzo, as they tell, you will handle the division, the sharing. And then we, the people of Obodupu, as the head, we are going to choose. And whatever we left shall become yours. Mm -hmm. This is the only condition for peace. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Wumba. Before we sent the peace one to the king of Obodoku, we had understanding as a people. Exactly, you said. But are not particularly comfortable with the condition the people of Obudu were giving us. Onyeze, Obudu people have no right to give us any condition. What condition are they giving us? That before we can settle out of court and rest all hostilities, the land in dispute must be divided into two equal parts. But that is what peace entails. Making sacrifices. Why should we have problem with that? Oh yes, I have a problem with that because that land in question belongs to us. People of Obuduku started dragging it because they feel we cannot do anything. But trust me, Onyeze, we are going to cripple them in court. Why go that route? Why waste that money, time and energy when we can resolve this land amicably? Onyeze, for that land to be divided at all, I suggest it be divided into three. They will have one, then we'll turn two. That's the only thing I see as victory. Only we understand you. But we must give peace a chance. Obodono Bodone Bino do Let the land in question is too big. Even if we share it into two, they will have enough. We will also have enough. Let us share it into two and have peace. Well, as you said, Don Yazi, you are the king. Njide, I am so happy. Seriously? My joy knew no bounds. The age long land disputes between our kingdom and the Singuzo kingdom is now settled. There is no peace. Seriously. <laughs> you see, peace is something that should never be traded. There is nothing like peace. You know, at some point, I began to feel for my brothers. I was like, what if they go to war and then return alive? What will become of my aged parents? Ono and other cabinet members who were constantly agitating for war. We never thought about what you just said now. Eh hey, hey. eh. Don't just mention my father's name here again. He's not your mate in any way. And don't forget that he is the traditional prime minister of Oboduko Kingdom. So respect no, I want you to respect that name. There's bitterness in your voice. Eh hey, hey. Don't jump at me, please. But seriously, who does that? How can a man who is only son have been in South Africa for over 10 years? Who cannot even come to Nigeria because he doesn't have papers? Be agitating for war. He wanted other people's children to go and die. My dear, I even heard Amichi doesn't have papers as well. And he has been hiding from immigration officer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for stepping into this matter. Whosoever God is using, to initiate this peace. Mm -hmm. Hi! May he continue to bless Amen. our peace. Amen. Ha! Amen. Peace! Amen. Oh, Jesus! Amen! What my instability?
now. How are you? I'm fine. How is work? Work is fine. Good. <clears throat> so, Papa, how is everybody? Everybody's fine. Mm -hmm. Your mother sent her regards. Um, she even gave me something to give to you. Um, breadfruit. Breadfruit, yeah. Mamu. Afomoro nonzu. Hey! Okay. Everybody, everything is here. Yeah. Um, where's my daughter? Madam, I know you won't tell me if I ask you, but I can make a wild guess to why you always bump in on me without having to call me to inform that you're coming, at least to make me prepare for you. That is exactly what I like to avoid. It is not in my nature to have people go out of their way because of me. I am not people, father. I am your daughter. I appreciate being disturbed by you, if that's what you want to hear. Thank you very much, my daughter. Um, you said something about Hilda. Oh, yes. I went to see a customer of mine, and on my way back, I had to stop over at Hilda's provision store to see how herself and the kids are faring. I hope they are fine. Oh, yeah. They are fine. But you know, Father, some men can be very, very pathetic. Do you know that ever since Derek ran off from the house, he has neither returned nor asked about the well-being of his wife and children. The only mistake Hilda made was to give birth to only girls' father. That's all. So because of that, his family has to suffer for a sin they did not commit. Hmm. Father Derek ran off to marry Olivia, Hilda's nanny. What? He was having extramarital affairs with her and was sleeping with her right on their matrimonial bed. And when the whole thing was blown up, Hilda chased Olivia away and then Derek ran off to be with her. Oh my God. Are you sure what you're saying? <laughs> I can never be more sure, Father. You know what? I'll, I'll get in the kitchen now and fix you something to eat okay. while you freshen up quickly. Thank you. Yes, Father. Oh. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. This food is nice. Do you have a cook in this house? Oh, no, Papa. Personally, prepare this in salad soup for you. That is nice. Um, <clears throat> you are a good cook. Thank you. <laughs> this is why I said you must get married. Not again, Papa. Not again. Come on now. I am your father. You know I can lie to you. I cannot lie to you. All I want is the best for you and for my other daughters. Papa, I have told you before, I am not ready yet. Jadeka, Moakego is getting married. That's good, I'm happy for her. Her husband's people came yesterday to inform me that they will be coming in a fortnight for bright price and one carry. Mm, that's good. Njideka. Mwakeko is my last child. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I was trying to avoid. A situation where you, my first daughter, was still be single while your baby sister is getting married. Papa. Wakego is my baby sister. I babysitted her because Mama left untimely. I did everything a mother would do for her own child. If she has decided to get married, 
then so be it. That she's getting married before me doesn't mean... It doesn't change anything, Papa. I'm not ready for marriage. When I'm ready, maybe I'll give it a thought. Jumeika, you single-handedly saw Mwake go through Nazareth school. Before she traveled to the United States of America, you even sent her abroad. My question is, why sit and allow her get married before every one of you? Father, you worry too much. We really do have to relax a little bit at least. Let her get married. That's her priority right now. Marriage is not my priority. Can we just allow this be, please? I hope you'll be traveling to United States to cheer your sister up on her wedding day. Trust me, Papa. <laughs> I will be there. We will all be nah, there. Nah. <laughs> me, exclusive. I'll stay back. Why? If you ask me, I'd rather stay behind to look after my house. <laughs> Papa, nobody is going to steal your house from you. Besides, you'll only be gone for a few days, so... I know. Papa, we'll all be there just to enjoy your meal, please. No, no, no. no. Not. Enough of the marriage pet stocks. Let me even ask you. Are you not a fulfilled man? I am. What could be more fulfilling than a man getting married, having children, training them in school, and see them go into marriage? Not just getting married, but getting the husband of their choice. I am happy for you, Father. If I were you, I would walk around with double shoulder pads. <laughs> Enjoy your meal, Papa. Oh boy. Okay. Let's... I can't wait to get to the party. <laughs> no, no, like seriously. <laughs> no, like seriously, you don't know my plan. <laughs> You ladies will have to take it very easy. My father's visiting, he's asleep. I do not want to wake him up. Oh, sorry. He didn't know about that. Thank you. <laughs> um, in that case, you have to go upstairs and get dressed. Because you're not leaving without you. Get dressed for what? Come on, Injideka. You can't do this to us now. How can you forget this? Babe, we all were preparing for this. Please, just go upstairs and dress up. Prepare for what exactly? Now I am already feeling vindicated. I mean, it was pointless coming to pick Njideka for this occasion. Because we we'll all know that Njideka doesn't attend parties. No. <laughs> I do attend parties. Uh -huh. But I must know the party. Njideka, this is the housewarming of Chief Adesanya. Oops! <laughs> the head of the Yoruba community in Osada. Mm -hmm. He invited us specially. And I gathered that he has a stand for us. So. And I also gathered that the governor will be in attendance. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It is my greatest opportunity, man, to meet one-on-one -on -one with the governor and possibly hand over my proposal document to him. <laughs> Who does that? I mean... You want to meet with the governor and hand over proposal documents to him in a public function? Who does that? Excuse me. Now, what are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to say you know better than I do? Well, I am not here to tread knowledge with you because you're already a lady of high class from every standard. Whatever. So, Njideka, please, can you go upstairs and get dressed now? Yeah. We are running late already. Mm -hmm. My father is here and I will not leave him. Ha, ha, I don't understand. Sweetheart, are you babysitting your father now? 
Please go upstairs and let's go. Okay, ladies. My younger sister, Wake Go, she'll be getting married next month in the United States of A. You all are invited. That is way bigger than this Owambe party. I oh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That's great oh, news. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but but uh, I'm sorry. I mean, so you mean your kid sister is actually getting married, mm -hmm. and you are still single? <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, pardon me, girls. I'm sorry, but uh, you see, I cannot actually waste my money flying down to the US just for that. <laughs> Dorothy, what is wrong with you? Why are you always like this? Always like how? We all have US visas. We can actually buy tickets for ourselves, right? Yes. We can travel to support one of our own. Sweetheart. Dorothy would not have to bother about that expenses. Because I, Njideka, mm -hmm. will take 100% responsibility for that. Get, get. All I want is just for my girls to be there for me on that day because I will be ah, we are the ready. mother of the day. Oh, yeah. For yeah. my baby yeah. sister. Yeah. There. We are there. We are there. See you, Betty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but please, we can't just waste this outfit. Let's go. Then you guys will have to go without me. No problem. Babes, I'm out of this place. I cannot miss the party for anyone. Not for Unjideka. Excuse me, baby. See ya. Excuse me. Oh. Um, Unjideka. See ya. Uh, ladies, I'm here to speak to Unjideka. She's my business partner and my sister-in-law. Do you know where she is? Unjideka is not the only one. Who is your sister in law? We are from the same town and we are also your sister in law. That's good. That means you can help me speak to Hilda, right? Now, why should I? After everything you did, you humiliated her and run after your house girl. He did not girl. only run off with his house girl, he actually married her. <laughs> Ladies, please. Both of you don't know me like that. So don't speak to me in that manner, please. Watch your mouth. That means you don't recognize me. No, I don't. Oh, okay. I am that lady that came to your site where you're building the other day to greet you. The lady your wife insulted. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that incident. Honestly, I am. But you see, that is why I'm trying to speak to Hilda, but she's not giving me the opportunity to, to have access to her. And you think it's that easy? After everything you did, Derek, please, please, just leave. Ladies, please, cool down. I've called Indidika like 10 times already, and she's not answering her call. I just know that if she speaks to Hilda on my behalf, everything will be fine. Um, Derek, let me even assume that Hilda listens to you. What becomes of your wife? Hilda is my wife. What are you saying? Really? I, I know I've done some wrong things. And, and that is why I'm here. To right all my wrong. To fix it. So where is Indidika? Mr. Fixer. Okay. <laughs> we do not know where Hilda is. Neither do we know where Indideka is. Can you leave now? I beg Waka. Leave. Hey, that's a castle. Yeah. Yeah. Are we not supposed to be happy? Of course we are. <laughs> I actually called us here for us to fix the date for the celebration. The age-long land dispute we have with the people of Isikuzo has been resolved. Uh. <laughs> we settled out of court. <laughs> and now that large expanse of land has been divided into two. They have taken their own and we have taken our own. So I feel we should be discussing on how we are going to meet as a kingdom to celebrate. <laughs> eh? Igwe, <laughs> man in council. Um, now that the land has been divided and we have taken ours, the people of uh, Isiguzo have taken theirs as well. My question is, 
how are we going to divide the land among ourselves? Very, very simple. Very, very simple. I want to say, is it only companies with uh, males in particular? Lie. Big lie. Greetings, Igwe. Greetings, my elders. Nidaka, what is this? No, how can you budge into a cabinet meeting like this? Were well, you not told we are meeting here? Igwe, with due respect, that land must be shared equally amongst men and women. Yeah. Njideka. Njideka! You are just a maiden. A maiden in this kingdom. You, you should know your boundaries. Oh no, I am not. A mere maiden like you call me. I am Jideka Ukwacha. The very maiden that initiated the peace that you all enjoy now. Jideka, how come you did not tell me your father? I passed through the eye of a needle to convince the king and his cabinet members to agree to settle this land dispute out of court. I know what I went through. I spent... <laughs> I spent the kind of money that I cannot even mention to you all here just to get this done. Her name is Injideka, the daughter of the peaceful man of uh, Boduku, Ichi Mkocha. Mm. Yeah, she's the one I told you about. I can make a guess here. Are you not the one the young men talk about? Oh no, I need to first of all understand what the young man said before I can finally confirm if I'm the one they spoke about or not. Are you the one in business? I mean, the one into importation of textile materials in the men market? By the grace of God Almighty, yes, I am the one. Uh, oh no, I gathered she has masters in business administration. And I get that is why she's doing very well in business. Exactly what the young men are saying. That you are richer than even the male importers. But I'm surprised with the risk you take. What risk are you talking about? The risk of revealing your identity in this land. Even the men of Ubudu who are afraid to come into Isiguzo kingdom because they know they are provoking us for nothing. I'm surprised that you a woman like you come into this land, enter the palace to meet with the Igwe. Mm. Oh, no. She's a brave woman. The first time she visited, she came alone. And even today, she arrived here alone. <laughs> Contrary to what most people think, these two kingdoms are related by same root. So this unnecessary problem have only come to destroy us. What do we do? We fight to solve this problem and stay united. Without mincing words, I'm here for peace. Peace between our two kingdoms. Why are you the only one coming to this place to talk about peace? The next thing you would say is that I am a woman. And truly, you know, I am a woman. But you would agree with me that war is not good for a people. You see, my people are planning to sack the men of your vigilante and hoist the flag of Obuduku on your land. And that will be the end of the men that will lead that charge. Because we will kill them. We will butcher them. We will cut them into small, small pieces of meat and use their flesh to feed the crocodile. All of this can be avoided. Remember we all came into this world naked, without anything. And one day we all will die and be buried in the ground without anything. Yes, but your people of Obudu will be buried first because they know that you people are provoking us for nothing. Oh no, it's just... Fighting. Oh no. my, my prince. <laughs> I heard your voice from my office. What is the problem? Uh, my dear, it's the prince, my son. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, the daughter of Obuduku, 
came here to initiate a peace process between us and her kingdom. But Ono has not given her the opportunity to explain how this peace is going to work. I'm interested in knowing how this peace would work. Thank goodness. So I heard that your kingdom have spent approximately 20 million naira to engage the lawyers representing you in court. That's right. I'm willing to pay you this money. I want us to settle out of court. What do you mean? From what you just said, you mean you're willing to pay us 20 million naira from your pocket? If this is the price I have to pay for peace, then I am willing to pay that price. And if you permit me, I can issue the check today. I strongly believe that you can help me achieve this. If you look at it critically, you would understand that peace is supreme. In the men market, there are a lot of young men from Isu Guzo who want to come to me to supply them goods, but they can't because of this. So should I understand this to mean that you are doing all this? I mean, putting all this effort just because of your business. That would be so selfish of you if you may ask me. <laughs> There's nothing selfish about this. Look at it from this angle. People, a lot of people come to me and I supply them goods worth millions of naira. These are total strangers, people I know nothing about. I supply them these goods on credit. So do you not think that my dear people of Isuguzo should also benefit from this? I get your point. I'll talk to my father about it. Please do. Because when we eventually succeed in peace, it will be for the benefit of all of us. I understand. Like I said, I'll talk to my father and you know an older man in council. I'll keep you posted. Here is my card. I'll be expecting a call from you. Thank you and have a great day. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Who are you looking for? Well, I am here to see one Miss Njideka in Kwacha. Okay. Who do I tell her that wants to see her? Tell her that Prince Alpha Mifuna, the Crown Prince of Isiguzo Kingdom, is here to see her. Did I just hear you say Isiguzo Kingdom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go in and deliver my message. No, sir. You want me to go and tell my madam, Auntie Jideka, that a man of Isiguzo kingdom, the same kingdom that we are having dispute with, wants to come and see Ha! No, 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 I cannot. Young man, why don't you just go inside and deliver my message? With all due respect, Oga Prince, just stay here while I go inside and tell her what you just said. No problem. Thank you for the hospitality. You are welcome, my prince. You're the last person I expected to see at my abode. How did you find me? Well, I went to your father's house in Uzuku. For a directive to your place, he was actually the one who gave me your address. He did? Yes. You're welcome. So to what do I owe this 
pleasant visit. My friends, how's your father the king? Ah, uh, my father, he's doing pretty fine. He sent me to you. He did? Yes. Injide, what you came to Isiguzo kingdom to do is something most gallant men lack the courage to do. You didn't even consider your safety. You didn't even consider that you may be harmed by the never-do-wells of the kingdom. My friends, I am a woman unbothered about things like that. I needed to understand that I am Wada. I cannot be harmed. She is brave, fearless, and courageous. And above all, she got some gods. So tell me, what's going through your head right now? That I am fearless? Hold on, how did you know that? I know. You know, you just read my mind. <laughs> I know, my friends, trust me. Well, I'm here to tell you that we have decided to do your bidding. Really? I am here in my royal capacity as the crown prince to give you this privileged information. And a letter to that effect will be delivered to you before noon tomorrow from the palace. I am honestly short of words. <laughs> But tell your father, the king, that I am most grateful. Njide, I must commend you for your giant stride. Oh. You are a good maiden. I'm honored, my prince. Thank you very much. I almost gave my life for this. Njide, you did not tell your father all this. I'm really sorry, Father. I thought you would discourage me. This is the height of embarrassment. My daughter had been going to Isubuzo Kingdom for peace talk all alone. What if something bad had happened to you? What will I do? And you never thought of that. I'm sorry, Father. I had to do what I had to do. Igwe, I was told that the land had been under dispute for a very long time. And a maiden like Onowu called me. A May maiden have finally brought this land to you. And you suddenly have the mouth to talk. Are you not the same man who was strongly agitating for war? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you can you can speak. Yedeka. In all your Knowledge, exposure, you know, moving around the world. Have you ever seen a situation where a female, no matter why in the a new memory, yeah, a female who must stoop in order to pass you in? Have you ever seen a situation where such a person takes part in? Discuss, discussion over lands or, or even uh, partake in land I mean, just tell me. Oh no. In all your years of existence, have you ever seen where grown up men who have issues, pressing issues before them, and instead of get up and find a solution, they sit down and a mere maiden, like you call me, gets up, steps on the gas, and profiles solution to a long-lasting issue which has been going on from 1972? Hey, in as much as I am not going to undermine the effort you have made to solve the problem that we have in this kingdom, I need you to understand that what you are demanding is unheard of. Igwe, with all due respect, that land must be shared equally. Abomination. Abomination. I can never be passed and parcel of this taboo. Then go, Man. go home. Helen, why are you doing this to me? I mean, this guy was your guy. Point of correction. Mark was never my guy. But he proposed to you. He wanted to marry you. I mean, 
He shouldn't have done that if the two of you weren't close. I was not close to Mark. Yes, he visited me twice, but I kept him outside. So can you convincingly say that we were close? Then, if this is the case, I'm finished. Kosi, you're not making sense. Can you, can you tell me what is happening? Why are you looking for Mark desperately? What happened? I'm beginning to feel he's a foster. I mean, I have the feelings, I have these feelings that he has defrauded me. How do you mean? What happened? Okay, okay. The money my brother sent to me from Germany to give to the engineer building his house mm -hmm. is with Mark. And since then, he hasn't been picking my calls. No, 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 no. Kosi, this is not good. This is not good at all. Wait. Dear customer, the MTN number you have dialed is currently switched off. Please try it hey! later. Thank you. Kosi, you have entered. Entered what? I don't understand. His number is not connecting. Then, if this is the case, my brother would never ever trust me again. God, what have I done? What have I done? Eh? Kosi, thank God I warned you. I told you about my... Like, I told you, you don't know him and you just delve into the relationship Blindly. Now, where do we start looking for Mark? Where? Please, you need to help me. How do I help? His number is not connected. I don't know his house. I told you. <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> You're the one who was funny. Oh, come. Okay, let me tell you this. I am so pleased to have you around today. I mean, a lady like you who runs the kind of tight schedule that you do to make out time to visit a friend. That is so nice. You are not just a friend. You are more than a friend. The one who saw the need for peace and swiftly jumped into action to make sure that it's being achieved. I would not allow anyone give me credit for something I did not do. This whole peace arrangement, everything was your brainchild. Njideka, you risked everything to push it through. All credits go to you. Well, I may have been the one to initiate it. I mean, I may have pushed for it. But if you did not come in with the kind of zeal that you came in with, maybe we wouldn't have achieved it. Okay. So thanks to you too. I accept that. Now, can we talk about something else? We fought for peace and peace is here. Why don't we talk about something else? What else would you like us to talk about? I am ready for you. Something in me tells me that there is us. Something in you tells you that there is us. What's that supposed to mean? I told you this before, but you dismissed it. But the truth is that from the very first day I set my eyes on you, I cannot stop myself from visualizing this picture of you and I as husband and wife. Why are you allowing your thoughts? to wonder why listen we're just friends okay maybe a little more than friends but let's just leave it at that i was hoping that you would say yes and be excited and you just say yes to me and i will marry you and you will become the princess of isiguzo 
automatically become the queen of this land. Very tempting proposal, I must admit. But I will not marry you. I can't marry you. Why, if I may ask? I will be interested in marriage someday. Not now. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. I greet you, Njideka. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Mm. I stopped because of the landing contention. Hmm. Njideka, as far as I know, there is no landing contention in this kingdom. We have settled our differences with Isiguzo people. We are only left in sharing the land with Igu and the elders in council. Should the men share the land among themselves and leave the women out of it because they are women? I'm of the opinion that this land be shared equally to everyone. It is not going to be possible. But you men can make this happen. Have you related this to the elders in council? I have. So tell me, what were their responses? They wouldn't hear of it. Exactly. You see what I mean? Delving into land matter is not for the women, but for men. Why don't you help me talk to one or two noble men in this kingdom and see how you can make this happen. Please. I'll try. <laughs> Let me see how she intends to succeed over her chase on this land issue. Or do you? We shall see. That land must be shared equally, just the way I want it. Yes, Says who? Says me. Who do you think you are? You are just a woman. And I want you to get that into your thick skull and stop rubbing shoulders with a man. I mean, come on. Dorothy, you are seated on my couch in my living room. But you're free to say whatever nonsense you wish with your mouth. It's yours after all. Let me ask you. Where were all the men of Obodoku Kingdom. Where were they when I personally saw that the case was settled out of court? Mm -hmm. I knew what I went through to get that done. And you're sitting here asking me stupid questions. You are indeed a superwoman. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, there is no big deal in what she did anyways. So quit these oh. praises. Oh. Dorothy, what is it again? What is your problem? Eh? You talk as if you can do half, half of what she had done to the two, two, two kingdoms. What is it? Come on, what is wrong with you girls? What is this all about? Njireka this, Njireka that. Hey, babe, what's up with you anyway? <laughs> what is it about you that, is there something we are missing? That one cannot really stay a moment without hearing this name, Njireka. <laughs> I can see someone is jealous. Excuse me. Even. Like seriously. You think I'm jealous of who? Njideka. And hey. why should I? Would you madurate you? Yeah. Dorothy baby. Be jealous of <laughs> Njideka. I mean, 
Are you more beautiful than I am? Ah! Listen, girls. All I'm trying to say is, we are men, women, and we should be under the man. Because that is how he's meant to be. Dorothy, ah. let me tell you something. I'm listening. We are here to congratulate Njideka. And not all this. Njideka, my darling sister. I am so, so proud of you. Oh. And I'm very happy and solidly behind you in this your fight to ensure that the land be shared equally to both men and women of our kingdom. Thank you. You're welcome, my darling sister. Honestly, I can never be part of this madness of yours. Dorothy, mm. can you leave Injideka alone and allow her to face a noble cause? Injideka, you have my full support, my sister. Solidly behind you, anytime, any day. My sister, you have my support 100%. Thank you so much, my sisters. You're welcome. You see, when we fight together, we win together. Yes. No longer shall a woman be relegated to the backyard in our society. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamers! Keep dreaming. Dream on! Dorothy, are you actually leaving? Uh uh. No. I'm actually staying here to listen to your rubbish you're blabbing about. Excuse me, I'm out of here. Do not break my furniture on your way out because you're way too large. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Alright. My sister, congratulations. My elders, I'm surprised. Why would the noble men of Obodoko Kingdom hearken to the voice of an ordinary maiden? I mean, the NG Deka we all know is nothing but a cheat. Oh yes, I live in the same city with her. And she's not what she portrays herself to be. Tell them! Everybody in the city knows Njideka to be into runs. Oh, runs? Oh, yes! <laughs> what do you runs. mean by runs? Njideka is into men. She do you men. shut up your mouth before I shut it for you? Look at her. I can see that jealousy runs in your family blood. Uh, I take exception to that. What? What do in fact see you going about? What's wrong with you? What don't you allow the girl to tell us what she has come here to tell you? Shut up your mouth. How could you sit here and watch your daughter say that my my daughter sleeps with men to make money? Who told you she's lying? You want to hear her? Speak. I'm not a liar. Your daughter Njideka specifically confided in me that she slept with the king and the prince of Isiguzo kingdom. So, <laughs> I mean, Njideka wanting the whole kingdom to do all she's asking of will be her greatest undoing. Young lady, you are a pathological liar. Igwe, I cannot sit here and watch this idiot spew. Bunkum, I cannot take this hook, line, and sinker. I think I have to call my daughter and put the call on voice out for this Dorothy here to prove to, to, to me that what she is saying is truth. Go her! In fact, that's exactly the best thing to do. Huh? Imagine I come into the palace to paint in Jamaica black. Go yeah. ahead and make the call. Yes, the phone is ringing. Good afternoon, Papa. What is good about this afternoon? Is everything okay? What's the problem? Njideka, how could you sleep with King Omerua and his son? To let them accept? Papa, who told you that 
told you I slept with the king and the crown prince. Who said that about me? Mama, are you trying to say you don't know your daughter? You don't know what I can do and cannot do? Ah, now I understand why you vehemently refused to marry Ernest. Papa, that is not it. That is not the case. Papa, who said I slept with the prince? Who said I slept with the king? A confidant who you confided in. Close confidant? Where? How? Hello. Hey, okay. Um, you. Hey. Get the phone. Speak to her now. You mischief your story. Papa, are you there? Yes, I'm here, my daughter. I Your Majesty. Hey, hey, hey. Your you? Majesty. She's trying to run away after rubbishing in Jideka's name. My elders, I'm not running away. I, I, I only want to take my cup, my king. Make one move from where you are and you will see the other side of me. My king, my king, please. Hey. I want to pick you. Keep quiet. Okay. Sir? What's going on? Who even said this about me in the first place? yesterday. Please calm down. I will tell you how it all happened. Do you know it was Dorothy that came to the palace? I said you are a Rose girl. Me? Yes. Rose girl? She said that before the Igwe and the others in Kaiso that you slept with Igwe Morue and the son to achieve your feet. And everyone in the kingdom was singing a panegyric song as if you won a trophy. Papa, you mean Dorothy came all the way from the city just to lie against me? Yes, and when I dialed your number, she was uneasy. She wanted to run away from the king's court. Are you saying she was there? Right when you were calling me? Yes, even the king and her father were there. She wanted to run away and the king asked her to come back, which she did, and she buried her face in ignominy. Papa, you see why I keep complaining about Dorothy's jealousy towards me? She doesn't even know how to hide it anymore. I thank the gods that she came to the palace to disgrace both herself and her father, the Onohu, yesterday. Dorothy. Do you know what? The king insisted that she should pay a fine of one he got and a hundred thousand naira for coming to the palace to lie against you. Hey, listen. For coming before the king with such prepared lies, to destroy a maiden of your land. You are here find one good. Okay. And 100,000 Naira that you must have to present before the close of business today a... for us to appease the land that you have desecrated with your life. Wow. Don't say anything to me. Because you prepared this. Yes. There is no way you are going to convince me that you were not part of this. <laughs> Henceforth, you are no longer the you know who of this king. Ah! Hey. Hey, hey, please, my king. Man, Pardon my man. father and I, please. This is punishment for the abomination that you have committed. Shiejina. Henceforth, 
Mkwosha, who has distinguished himself both in character and in high level of integrity, is now the Ono of Opoluku Kingdom. No major. What I have just said here now is a statement made by the king and it stands irrevocable. Igwe. In the day, my daughter, that was what happened. Papa, I am still surprised. You mean he lost his position to you? Oh, yes. Wonders shall never end. And the same Gallo, he and his daughter prepared for us, was the same that destroyed them. Evil is evil. It doesn't pay. Never. Never. Chejina and his daughter left the palace in ignominious defeat. They wished the ground should open and swallow them. So you mean you're the new know of our kingdom? Yes. <laughs> Life and direct. <laughs> <laughs> Father, this is a very good news. Yes, do you know that people that heard about the news, they have been paying homage to me. <laughs> The new no. Look at that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have yeah. you informed your children about your new position? Um, no, I have not. What are you waiting for? Listen, I want to make sure it's not a dream. Papa, this is not a dream. Wake up and let your reality hit you in your face. You ah. are the no for real and not in dreams. I know. Anyway, I, 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 I heard that... Um, the king asked after you. Yes, he called me on the phone and asked me to see him. Are you going at once? Immediately. So what am I doing here? Let's go together. Okay, father. That's okay. Njide okay. Kankwocha. <laughs> I personally invited you here for me to tell you how sorry I am for not believing in you. That's okay, Igwe. Thank you. And uh, without wasting time, I need to tell you what we have approved in council. That land is going to be shared between the males and females of a Boluku kingdom who are of age. That's some good news. Um, yes, Njideka, we actually decided yesterday at the council meeting to oblige your request. But I did not want to let the cat out of the bag. I wanted it to come from the horse's mouth. Thank you, my king. Thank you very much. You don't know what you have done for us? And I need to tell you that there is something I have decided as king, something we did not discuss in council. I am doing this using my veto as the king of Ubudubu Kingdom. That land is going to be named after you. You are surprised? That is just the truth. Henceforth, it will be named Njide Kampocha Estate. Oh my goodness. This, this is good news. Thank you, my king. Thank you for honoring me in my lifetime. This means a lot to me. Thank you. Ngideka, you, you may not understand what you did for us, but your father, Uno Wunkwacha, he has set an example in this kingdom. Yes. <laughs> I learned many things from Onowu and Kwasha's family. He set a standard to himself in involving, in fact, investing in his female children. Now, he is reaping the fruit of his labor mm. in his old age. Mm. Mm. Ngideka, I need to let you know that 
we are very proud of you. Yes. What you have achieved is, is, is something that is so, so, so remarkable. And because of your achievement, that's saying that uh, the place of the woman is in the kitchen should be abolished. Thank you, my king. Thank you very much. This means a lot to me. Kios, I'm so happy. I wish I could see Vidika face to face so I could give her congratulations as she for her feet. Indeed, she is a man in a woman's body. I have never seen such bravery. Everybody are busy celebrating Ujideka without knowing that it was the seed her father, Ono Unkocha, sowed in her via her education that is at work. Agatha, you are right, you know. I wish my father had, had sent me to school. I wouldn't have been here as an ordinary palace man. My father was so adamant to send me to school because according to him, he was like, no daughter of mine will receive any university training from me. Not after spending so much money on her, one man from nowhere will come and marry her off, then reap the fruit of my labor. Yeah. Seriously, I blame my father 100% for what my life has become. I just wish if I should be given an opportunity to go back to school, I would gladly accept to desperate my age. My dear, do you know that one of my friends that just graduated from one of the prestigious universities in this country told me that she had three classmates of hers that were old mama and papas. What are you saying, Agatha? Even the queen of this land is still in school studying law. You mean our only boy's wife? Whoa! She is in the same university with her children. Yes, I heard she was not opportuned to go to school when she was in her father's house before getting married to our king. She was even true with childbearing before she saw the level of achievements of Ono Wunkocha's children and the height they have attended in the society. So she decided to go to school just to acquire the certificate. <laughs> not just a certificate, but a certificate in civil law. Hey God. What is this? I came here with all the enthusiasm and the vim to come and meet Hilda just so I can ask for forgiveness and try and settle this thing. Is this your attitude? What's going on? Things have changed? There are only two reasons we are still here talking. The first is because I've come to realize that you are not the one who went on to that stupid Olivia. But she came on to you. Exactly. Exactly. It was never part of my plan. I, I didn't even think about it. She seduced me. She, she came up with all of this. And you, as the useless he goat who cannot control his libido and stay out of temptation, fell woefully for it. Huh? Listen. I've exhumed all of the anger, and I'm finally ready to solve this. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, and I thank you for understanding. You know, Hilda is such an angel compared to the one I ended up with. To think that she gave me additional girls. Something I was running away from. Two girls. It took away all the peace and the love that I had when I was with Hilda. It just got me in this mess. So, so. The second reason. 
is that unlike most stupid men, you did not chase Hilda and the kids out of the house. Rather, you left the house for them. And this singular act alone has brought me to the point of realizing that you, Derek, are a good man. I mean, regardless of your inadequacies and all this nonsense that you have put yourself in. I, I realize that you still have some sort of sympathy left in you. Human sympathy. I even built a big house. A bigger house. It's a really nice house. You should see it. I, I think Hilda and the girls and I can live in love and harmony and peace. It's a really nice place. You should see it. Really nice. We can live there in peace and harmony and like one big happy family. One big happy family. Yeah. Baby. I am not going to try to defend my actions. Because I was wrong. Whatever I did, all that I did, I was wrong. I'm not going to try and explain why I did what I did. I just want to plead with you to forgive me. Because I regret my actions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it was wrong of me to do. Can you just uh, look deep in your heart and see how you can forgive me, please? I'm sorry. So, oh, I'm sorry. Derek. Do you now realize that whatever baby a woman births, male or female, is exactly what her husband put in there. Yeah. Yes. Do you also realize that it doesn't matter the sex of the baby, male or female, it doesn't matter. What matters is the quality of training the child gets. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do you also, beyond any shadow of doubt, agree that a female child is as important as a male child? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Sorry. I, I should have been enlightened. Yeah, I was. But I agree that the male child is important and the female child is equally important. I want to give our girls Training, the best of training. Of course, with you, girl or boy, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I just need you to forgive me. I'm gonna love our girl. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so upset. Please forgive me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm 
Wait a minute, Izeka. You mean Derek came begging and you allowed Hilda to go back to him? Oh, Njidek, I'm so disappointed right now. Was this not how Adobe died? She was encouraged to remain in a toxic relationship with her husband. And before we could realize what was happening, she's gone. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, Amanda, I'm sorry to cut you short. But I think you're missing the point here. What point? We all live in this city. And we knew what Derek did to Hilda. Allowing Hilda to go back to Derek, it's a no no. She said you missed something. And that is the core component of this whole argument. Why don't you allow her finish so you can understand what she's talking about? What is she saying? Who would deny the fact that Derek was toxic? Okay. We can call him toxic, but we all know that. Derek never raised his hand on Hilda. Exactly. He was only obsessed with the boy child thing. And now that he has come to realize that the sex of a child doesn't matter. Now that he has come to realization that he was wrong, are we not going to let him have his wife? And he came begging, Evelyn, you remember? He came begging both of us right here in Njideka's house. He has become a new man. I think we should just allow them be. You know, at this point, I thought that y'all all will be talking about yourselves. How do you mean? Good question. Look at yourself. Look at you. You. And you. You all are very, very comfortable. And breathtakingly gorgeous. Why are you still single? Oh, <laughs> Jidek, are you kidding us? Right Why now? haven't I seen a ring on your fingers? <laughs> are you serious? I kept mine at home. <laughs> Look at that. Wait, Jideka. I'm surprised you're talking about us. You should be talking about yourself. I wonder. Yes. You who has a mega part of Obodoko, named after you should be married already. <laughs> My sisters shouldn't be single because of me. For I am already gone. <laughs> I don't understand. You're gone? Gone already. And you didn't tell us? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? applied to be a cleaner in this my facility. Oh, yes ma'am. I'm Oliver and one who applied. Um, your mind already told me that you're in first primary so my, I need this job very badly. Yeah. Sit down. Okay, thank you. Olivia. Yes ma'am. Your resume reads divorced. How is it that you are already divorced at this young age? Um, I am not just divorced. My ex-husband who was complained that I was only giving him girls, used the director of welfare department to take care of my daughters from me. I am just alone. I need this job to survive. Please. <laughs> it's all right. You have the job. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you, ma. Thank you very okay. much. It's okay. Thanks. Hey. Thank it's all right. But it seems you do not recognize me. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I should. Please, can you remind me? Do you remember the day your husband Derek brought you to the end of Nebi Close where he was building a house. That comprises the whole matter at all. You built a bungalow for Hilda. And now you are with me, you have to give me something far better than this. Yes. And why in the world would I do that? Are you any better than Hilda is? I left Hilda because she was giving me females. 
decided to be with you so that you can give me males. And you're also giving me females. And you've concluded I cannot give you males. For how long should I wait? How many years should I wait? You've given me two girls already. I know that. Start producing the meals and then you can ask for a bigger house. Good afternoon, neighbor. Yes, hello, afternoon. You must be the owner of this house. Yes. I'm your neighbor. Oh, that's nice. As you can see, we're almost completed and very soon we'll be real neighbors. And who says that? Who is ready to be neighbors with people who is already showing themselves? Baby, we are likely to rent this place out, please. I am not ready to compete with these weirdos. And that's it. You don't have to call me names, my dear. I only came to say hi to a neighbor. And please, hold your hi to yourself. I don't need it. Let's go, baby. The neighbor who came to greet us that day. Hey, ma, I am very sorry for what happened that day. I am sorry. Please, forgive me. It's okay, Olivia. Sit. I'm sorry. Please sit. Thank you. Just like I already said, you have the job. Thank you very much. I'm just Stop hoping this. that you learn your lessons and gradually pick the broken pieces of your life. Yeah, I've already learned my lessons, honestly. I have. Okay. Hey, Judeka. Why are you adamant in accepting my marriage proposal? You know that I love you very much. You know. Honestly, I love you very much, Ernest. I was fighting a just cause. And now that I'm finally able to prove to the world that a female child is as important as a male child, I can settle down. So yes, I will marry you. <laughs> Wait. You mean you will marry me? Ernest, I could not have asked for a better person than my Ernest. Mm. So yes, I will. My father and I are traveling to the U.S. for my sister's wedding. Oh. And I'm coming with you guys. You want to attend my younger sister's wedding with us? Yes. Oh, I love you, Ernest. And every single bill regarding that wedding is on me. I love you. So much. And I love you more. Come here. <laughs> Ability. 